God damn, Gary. Some serious gourmet shit. What flavor is this? That's right, it's the all hell medium roast private blend. Check out the Geek Grind Coffee Nerdrotic page for our other options like the Decadent, Feathers of Liberty, Vanilla Infused Flavored Coffee. Or if you're looking for something darker, try the Dark Roast FNT Blend of the Fellowship. You know what? Just buy all three. GeekGrindCoffee.com. Use discount code Nerdrotic. Welcome, travelers, to the fringes of reality, where the strange and mysterious meet, and the thin veil between fact and fiction is torn. Welcome to the Forbidden Frontier. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Let's do that. Travelers. Yes. Frontiers. Forbiddeners. Uh, welcome oh. to our, uh, the Juneteenth episode of Forbidden Frontier. Oh, wait. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I wanted to start out right, just kind of carrying it over from FNT. Yeah. It's a very tame episode. Uh, so we're waiting for Adam, everybody. He will be here. Uh, he will be here. We're starting late, obviously. Don't get too excited. Uh, because of my great organizational skills. And, well, it's Graham Hancock's fault. Hey, you, we had to delay, or is it early? I, we're in a different time zone. I don't know what we had to delay because we were in Graham's panel yeah. talking about psychedelics. We had to finish the entire thing. We were like, maybe we'll leave halfway through so we can get here. But we had to, we got sucked into it. Just how it is. Yeah. We skipped the Q and a cause it was weird. Yeah. It just got, it yeah, was really weird. weird. Yeah. yeah. Even Graham was like, uh, even was Graham was uncomfortable. Yeah. He had to call somebody out <laughs> for, good. uh, basically, Asking a 10 minute question that was a comment. Very, uh, yeah, it was more of like a statement. She was making like a whole statement about reality and life and stuff. It was like, wrap it up. Uh, Adam Krigler brought to you by OBS, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I, I'm, I, I thought we had, you told me an hour and a half late. So I was like, or an hour and 15 minutes, which is another 30 minutes from now. So I wasn't. We're not Ready, organized. I'm, We're not organized. All right. I'm, don't worry about that. I honestly just looked at the time. I didn't actually look at the okay. Is your time zone 90 <laughs> minutes? <laughs> I was like, I can't do the math of the time right now. So I'm just going to look there. Okay. Oh CST got it. What well, I he, do? well, you guys told me when you were going to end it, when, when Graham's thing ended. So I didn't know yeah. if you needed some time to like get home we, or well, we, to the hotel we, or wherever you are. A little snack. We're, we're, uh, we're in an Airbnb. Yeah, and love they're in their love oh, nest guys, right now. You guys together in an Airbnb. We are. It's Dude. our honeymoon. Yeah. Oh my god, it's, it's beautiful. It's Airbnb. absolutely beautiful. When in California, <laughs> it that's is right. Pride Month. Just, just <laughs> like this video that um, it it looks like there's a members video. Yeah, <laughs> somebody said it looked like our honeymoon video. <laughs> <laughs> just get like a little moment, but a little sneak peek. But if you want, become a member. Oh, here we are. Contact them. You might have noticed uh, we didn't stream 
last yeah. night or the night before. A little tired. A little tired. What were you tired from? <laughs> <laughs> Cali- <Okay>. California. <laughs> no kiss and tell. Mm. So if you want to know, just uh, become a member and find out. What happens in Palm Springs stays in, stays in Palm Springs. <laughs> uh it's, it's uh yes we're esg friendly now yes uh so i i, I agree uh this was uh, a great weekend a great weekend and uh but before we even start uh adam mm-hmm. j- sorry you couldn't be here yeah, but man. i know that's okay we got you dvds of every panel we went to oh, hell yeah yes yeah, so we're Those gonna for me yes we're gonna get you copies of oh, all shit send them to we will digitally yeah. send them to you we're gonna rip them and yeah i'm uh, okay with that yeah and but it was for me right that's like yes that's, yes we did this for you yeah, i love we it saw them with our eyes we so saw, you need to yeah. see them too yeah and then you a know, lot of cool stuff man there was a a ton of uh really great panels uh some got a little crazy some are like down to earth and a lot had uh you know a lot of a lot of fun i was saying today what what I found in the entire group of people that went to contact in the desert, there was nobody that was mean going like, get out of my way. You're cutting in line. I want to get in there. No aggression. It was like super chill people. Maybe it's because they're old. It's yeah. Old Cause people. the, uh, yeah, the average age was 60. Yeah. They're just uh, like, we you know, were some of the youngest people there for the most part. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> that, that, which is fine, but, but I think it's why, you know, uh, Ben from Uncharted X was was great last week. By the way, if you haven't watched that yes, episode, go check it he out. Was. It was but awesome. he was also grateful that like we're covering this stuff, and I'm like, really? Like I I love it. And he's like, no, it'll like hopefully you know it'll put some new eyes on it. And uh, but I think there's always been these eyes on it. They just don't maybe go to conferences because uh, because quite frankly, this started Contact in the Desert started as the Conscious Life expo so it started out as some meditation woo woo shit but it's really crystals and yeah and it's there, believe me there's no shortage still there man there's no a lot shortage of crystals. of crystals there but um with the ancient uh civilization talk and and the way you know it's it's much more grounded much more tangible you can see evidence now and there's like yeah. real scientific work done and it's surpassing the ufo part of it oh, it cool. just is uh the ufo part of it is uh kind of in trouble and we'll talk yeah. about that but uh I saw, a, I saw a question in the chat are did we meet any aliens yes we did there's a story about that we'll yes, you. You did. yes so we, we, well we, my we, first thought would be what stuck out i mean if if everything's else is overtaken the ufo stuff what what subject were you like oh wow uh, what stuck I, with you the most I mean, Graham's Graham's Graham is a rock star now, yeah, like beyond a- anything. Everybody, everything he did was packed. Yep. Uh, standing cool. ovations, standing two ovations. Of them. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. But the person who brought like the new information was Hugh Newman from Megalithomania with the uh, uh, kind of going off of what Ben talked about last week. Karahan Tepe. Karahan Tepe uh gobekli tepe uh and then there's a there's there's 18 there's more so of them many more there's 18 more of them that they, and they think there's like hundreds more hundreds all in turkey all yeah in turkey. all in that same region all in that and th- these yeah. are the ones that they've found on the surface that they've uncovered they've excavated but not right. the ones that are under the surface that they've ground penetrating radar that they've found they haven't like dug down there yet but yeah there's tons it's insane and then cool. uh, graham alluded to and it like a, a couple of things that we'll talk about um and a good friend of ours who will know who he is in the chat i can't name it i'm sorry is was on, is on a dig this weekend uh oh. but uh it could because his uncle is a an archaeologist and he also uh they're talking about there is evidence somewhere around jordan of a uh a tunguska like airburst that wow. wiped out uh, a, a civilization. So, like that—that's the new stuff. And like, do they Graham, have a time period on that? No, nah, not yet. But um, okay. I'll know it next week or week after next when we go to Asheville. Then yep, we'll get sweet. all the all the deets on it. But uh, yeah, uh, Adam, man, I'm sorry you couldn't be here, but uh, we'll get you out Thank here you. for one of these. We'll get you out here for one of these, dude. Thanks for Sounds joining. Good. Us. Yeah, uh, yeah. X-ray girl, what's up? What's up, lady? Hi. 
I had a, a nice little nap before this and um yeah, had a good weekend. So I'm happy. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um so the thing about UFO, uh you would have had probably a couple of naps because they're really dry. I had to warn Melissa and and Garrett. I'm like, these things are dry. They go the the the, the lectures used to be longer. They used to be two used and to be a longer? half to three hours. <laughs> They, cut, they, 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 the put only one I want to be that long is Graham Hancock. That was the only one I was like, keep going, keep yep. going. Everybody oh. in the room wanted him to keep going, but it's, but it's what you would have loved, Adam. It's pure information. There is no, oh man, awesome bullshit. Yeah, it was very, it is from Graham, from everybody, everybody. from Graham. It is just bullet points, photos, uh, evidence, uh, Ooh. backing up your claims. Uh, this oh, is yeah. uh, this, this mm -hmm. is the theory. Boom. Yeah. And that's all it is. And, and that's it, that's what's on those DVDs you got there yep. on that uh, sitting oh, right yeah. in front of you Dude, that you're going to give to me. I've yes. got nine of them, so it's an hour and forty five minutes <sighs> times nine. Wow. Each. All right. So, yeah, you nice. got a lot of information. You got a lot of information. I'm going to go through these and clip them, and uh, maybe even find a way for the members to see some of the better ones. Uh, but and uh, maybe bring yeah. some of them on. Uh, oh, wow, yes. I'd love to. Yes. Did you get to meet Graham? No. 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 Gra Graham no. was, we had a chance at the he's end a of rock the star. panel, but we, he is because he offered, he's like, I'll stay here till, uh, and take a picture with everybody. Oh, like, he's that's super so cool. Sweet. Yeah. But we couldn't that's stay cool. there for an hour. There was like, you know, there was, about, there was a lot of people, there was in a there. few hundred people in that, in that room. And this was just like one of his lesser conferences because he was talking about the ayahuasca. But what I really like about Graham though is like he doesn't think he's a rock star because when, when you go into the panel, he's just sitting there. He yeah. He walks he's not in like through in the back with his backpack. Anything. He's just, he's chatting. just a regular oh. dude. It's like, what? you need to be in the back, like in a green room and they're like ready and you're like, Graham Hancock, and then he walks out, you know, but he's just chilling. Super chill, dude. That doesn't surprise me. Seems no. that way. I think a part of that is if he does a lot of lectures, you just, you just do that. You go in, yeah, you get, plug your USB in if you have a PowerPoint, and then you sit and wait until you. <laughs> I, I want fanfare. I want the lights to go down. They did that for Nori. They all Sorry, they down. The Ark Spartan just said, I zoned out. Why is Adam watching uh, Gary and Garrett's honeymoon DVDs? <laughs> <laughs> this is what's going to happen when you come back to uh, the stateside. <laughs> it's a weird fetish of mine. You know, I don't know. <laughs> so we uh, on the UFO side, the only solo panel we actually watched was Nick Pope. So Nick Pope's on his was really good aliens and uh, he was great. He did a thing called After Contact, and he has a very matter-of-fact, grounded way of approaching it. Uh, and it was it, that was a, an excellent panel. We think it's Dolan, Richard Dolan. All of his main lectures were during Grams, and it was like, uh, yeah. So that's they, why they double booked. It was, it was sorry, like, dude. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I Dolan, I love you, brother, but uh, Graham. Okay, Graham's older. I don't know how you know he's seventy-three. We want to catch him while we can. It, you know, it's like the tenth time I've seen Graham. But uh, I got see. That's the thing: is you get the lectures, you can't see. Yeah. But we did get to see uh, Dolan in a group. Uh, th they had group panels, right? Which Graham was part of one too, uh, with George Snorri. Uh, and uh, I guess George Nori, this was his idea. I guess the Conscious Life Expo was his idea back in the day. So he gets like star treatment. He yeah. he is freaking terrible. He is. He, like, he's the guy who took over Art Bell's place on Coast to Coast, and he's just terrible. He's just, uh, for one, it's, I don't think you've ever seen him. When he walked out, you're like, that's his natural hair color. And oh, yeah. like It's jet black. It's like, he's you're, like a ra 80. you're a radio dude. Why are you wearing a toupee? Mm -hmm. Nobody cares. You're on the radio, for one. Uh, but no. It, he couldn't it, ask questions. Like He would just throw you questions and be like, what do you think about that? And you'd yeah, be like, what? He, think about what? Yeah, he's terrible at interviewing. Uh, and and you, you he know. sat down like not halfway early earlier than halfway through the panel. He just sat down behind the yeah. the people that were on the panel. He was supposed to be moderating. He was like moderating, and he just like sat down behind people. And not a mention of Art Bell anywhere. <laughs> like uh, so like next time I come here, I'm just gonna wear an Art Bell shirt the whole time. Uh, because just not a mention of the guy who like created all this. Like the 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 reason any of this is here is because of Art Bell. So hail Art Bell. But uh, we miss you. Um, so yeah, we got to see Nick Pope. Yeah, uh, that was huge. the first panel, first day on Friday. 
uh, uh the second what was the second panel we went to that that was the oh we saw linda moulton how yeah, we okay, wanted to so, see a wanted to see a woo woo one and it was woo it was, <laughs> it was woo, woo as woo. hell it's like what uh, uh the panel was uh what happens when you meet a tall white yes a white so a tall white is like uh you know like the grays so the, the alien greens. alien yeah. race so there's yeah, a, okay. a superior alien yeah. race it's whoa the, whoa whoa i'm sorry <laughs> what that's hey look i'm just they're the, the facts. supreme alien that's just how it is there's they're the supreme that's, alien. that's what her whole panel was about yeah. was that yes yeah yeah, uh, yeah. so I there's the language there's the wow. okay there's 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 the praying mantis, the bug. Yeah, and then she, yeah, that was, so it opens with the one. So it's like, here's the the one alien that we're going to talk about. And then it goes on, and there's like a bunch of Well, there's things. short grays, tall grays, the praying mantis types. There's, praying there's, mantis. The, there's lizard, uh, like snake there's people. There's the reptilians. There's the, um, there's like arachnids or something. Like she shows a big picture of the solar system and it pinpoints all these locations all the, where these other, like, there, yeah. there's a, it's a very deep and then there's sci fi the, novel. Then there's the Nordic. Nordic who the are Nordic, basically yeah. humanoid and then there's the tall whites who are kind of uh more alien yeah they're about 10 feet tall uh and they're, they're the wisest ones now the the most ancient is the tall grays who are according to Linda Moulton Howe are the ones who seeded earth but they're gone they're extinct so it's now the Nordic and the tall whites who have sh- kind of protected earth from the more aggressive alien species like the reptilians yeah. and the uh, insects and the insects there was one that said uh, aggressive Is everybody insects. taking notes okay yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I, so I, I'm not taking notes yeah. by the way i was like uh i got man. my pen in my hand there's, and i'm there's, there's a keeping lot of it close okay, so we we forgot to the, tell you the story in nick pope his his lecture was very down to earth it was just like stating the facts of uh different ufo things uh, not saying necessarily that it is extraterrestrial or any of that. He was just saying like what this is very, very matter of fact. Yep. And then he opened it up to questions and a couple people had some interesting, insightful questions. And then one guy comes up and he says, uh, hi, my name is uh, blank. Um, uh, I, I'm coming out today. I'm coming out. Uh, I have three aliens in my body. <laughs> uh, uh, they uh, telepathically tell me he came out as what, trans they, alien. what they want. And uh, Wait, are you serious? Actually, oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, dude, this guy was Dead 100% serious. serious. Yeah. And uh, I have cybernetics <laughs> that connects me with them. I went to the doctor and he uh, they did a CAT scan and they didn't actually find anything. They said it had a tumor, but that was it. And I know that they're wrong. Uh huh. And this uh, is verbatim. I, this is this what is he like was saying. Verbatim. Yeah, like what is... he said. And he was like, I, I telepathically <laughs> heal people. You know, like uh, on mm. televangelists, they have miracles. Well, I do that across the world telepathically. And he yeah, was don't like, worry about healing yourself, he like, buddy. Pope, what do you think I should do? <laughs> and he was like, well, uh, welcome to Earth. Uh, you should go see the doctor. <laughs> what? Yeah, please go see the doctor. <laughs> He tells him to go see a doctor, and then he, he says, it really well. And if you want to prove you're you're actually an an alien to any to any scientist, I guess there's some mathematical theories that have not been solved yet. Yeah. He's all Answer solve this. one of the unanswerable mathematical theories, and that then then you know he'll think you're the real deal. You know, uh, that was that's pretty one. funny. It was panel yeah. one, day one. That's a good funny. response, actually. A great response. It was a fantastic yeah. response. He handled it really well. He's yeah, very kind. Uh, so the I guess the biggest problem I mean like there needs to be some new blood in UF, ufology because after 2017 and the uh, the Tic Tac, a lot of infighting started to happen mm-hmm. and a lot of government you know quite frankly government control came into ufology whether it's I you know do I think some people in the government want to tell the truth sure but we can't expect people who are in the intelligence field we can't you can't expect us to believe can't them. believe them you can't. That's going to be like, you can't be the messenger. Sorry. Even if you're telling the truth perception wise, and you should know this as an intelligence person, people are not going to trust you, especially after COVID. And, and Nick was especially based when it came to COVID. Yeah. Uh, and he even said, uh, he's like, you know, before COVID, I was, I was under the impression. I totally agree with him, by the way, I was under the impression that we were ready as a society for disclosure, like full disclosure, there's aliens, there's spaceships, we don't know where they're from, whatever, whatever disclosure looks like. He's all after COVID. I don't think so. 
the response the response to covid was so insane and one of his you know one of the points he brought up is like hey what if we find uh by a uh, microbial alien life uh and then we bring it down to earth and we keep it someplace really safe like uh wuhan china <laughs> Like the Wuhan lab. Oh, you don't have to say that. Just any bio lab. I mean, yeah, they, I agree. Uh, I'm, we got to be careful, Wuhan, actually, with this conversation. <laughs> Who cares? You don't? Okay. Because like but, uh, they, they, there's other bio labs that they've proven that there's way worse things that they're working on. Absolutely. No. Like way worse. Fuck these bio labs. And everybody thinks if they want to make science a deity, uh, they're the ones who created this fucking mess. Thanks, science. Go fuck yep. yourselves. So, uh, yeah. And I, I said that. I said that, uh, but um, yeah, no, he, the, the fact that he made that joke there and nobody freaking yelled at him or anything or gave him shit. There's definitely people that were, were wearing masks. There were, was there? there yeah. were a couple, there was a couple, but it was very like small. face That's, masks. Those not like alien masks. Right. right. Well, it's, it's okay. So <laughs> well, it's in, in, like the, space in the UFO field, Hey, you never know. Yeah. You could, you can judge somebody's, you know, the UFO field is supposed to be the most skeptical field of government of all, of absolute all, right? Right, uh, like right above like punk rockers and, and, and rock and roll should be UFO, people who are UFO enthusiasts should be like skeptical of everything from the government. And you saw a bunch of them bend the knee, bend the knee. And, and that's what created the schism in the UFO field big time. Like it, it created a schism in everything in America. True. You really did like pro authoritarianism versus anti authoritarianism. And it affected absolutely everything in our culture. And uh, like, so Nick Pope and Richard Dolan were the only ones who, you know, they had Seth Shawstack there from SETI. He's a straight up government honk. Uh, and I guess they wanted to have him there as the opposing point of yeah. view, but he would just poo poo everything. And his, his response to everything was, there is a bad people in the government. They don't want to do evil. It was a bad and take. It was a bad take. And, you know, very bad. Just like, yeah, okay, sure. There are some government employees that are not evil and that aren't participating in these yeah. like, setups, right? But that's not the echelon. The people that are doing it aren't the bottom level employees. They're the people that are at the top. No, they're the military the industrial yeah. complex the and Air Force fucking politicians. They're the and people making the decisions. Right. Giant corporations in league with the military industrial complex. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. it's like and and this is getting proven every day. So he like that was a super like boomer fucking take. But Dolan smacked him down. And just straight up said, oh, yeah, because the government's never lied to us ever, yeah. ever. And, <laughs> you know, it, it's it that's going to be the problem. So so and his take on aliens is, oh, if they were here, they would let us know. Why? Why would they let us know? Why would they care if we're an anthill to them? Uh, we even notice do ants notice in, until they're being stepped on like if anybody well, and, and, and if they can observe us and they they see us. I don't know if you've seen the human race lately. Yeah. <laughs> it's right. kind of kind of a fucking clown world. Associate. Yeah. So some of the takes were were bad from Seth, but he's always had he's been a bad take machine for decades, in my opinion. I don't, so I he's staying true to himself. It, That's good. I was agreeing with some of it because I am very skeptical of the whole UFO alien connect like contacting us thing. Um like I told you, I'm very much more of the ancient uh, apocalypse and ancient civilization kind of stuff. Like I, I think that's more possible. Uh, not that I'm saying that I don't think there's possibilities of other civilizations or other life in the universe. I think that's a very high possibility. But I think it's a low possibility that they actually came to Earth and abducted people and poked them in the butt. Well, you know, that's so I'm coming from that angle, but I find it very fascinating, like hearing the stories of the things like crop circles or uh, abductions or uh, UAP phenomena and stuff. I find that stuff very fascinating, too, but I don't believe a lot of it. I'm very skeptical. because I'm like, uh, that looks like VFX or that looks like this. Um, yeah. So, yeah, but I, that's what I liked about Nick Pope is that he was very pragmatic about it. He was like, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Like if this doesn't, isn't real, that doesn't, you know, throw everything out of the, you know, baby with the bathwater kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, well, he was very, just like, just accept the evidence. Uh, like the thing is though, who's going to provide it? Like we can't, it's going to have to be from private hands. It's going to have to be from uh, quote unquote amateurs. 
that like because because you know what if the, if a fucking ufo lands on the white house lawn and people even mention this like people aren't going to believe the government there's it depends yeah. on which it'll be like set it up it on it'll it'll depend on which party's president is in, in the white house for yeah. one because the opposite party will just automatically not believe it yeah. and uh that that's feds probably, well, feds right yeah yeah and, and you know that's like take the mask off that's a problem mm -hmm. the government has created, not the people. The government, the media, that is a problem they've created. So it's going to have to be uh, like we're going to have to find out for our, on our own. But the, the fact of the matter is when it comes to Atlantis, which was a, a theory that was dead, it was a dead theory for a long time. For, for a couple of decades, Atlantis was crazy spaceship crystal bullshit. And now it's the most believable one. At this point, it's yeah, that's true, and, and and it's and I put Atlantis in quotes, like mother civilization, you know, uh, it's a better way of putting it because well, there's uh, probably uh, other civilizations around yeah. the planet that yeah, were the multiple. Atlantean Empire. Atlantis is just the label for yeah. it. And there might have been an Atlantis that probably had a different name. But, Wouldn't it be uh, great if if aliens did land on the White House lawn and, and they got out and they're wearing no, khakis? Ah, <laughs> yeah, there's like, like what we wear khakis. Like us. <laughs> it would explain a lot. Just hanging out, man. How y'all doing? They were in khakis. So, yeah, the UFO field in a bit of trouble, but they've got people like Nick Pope and Richard Dolan trying to ground it and get to the truth. And I think that's good. And, uh, you know, Dolan, the one lecture we missed, was talking exactly that. He's like, you know what? There's a lot of subjects in the UFO field that have absolutely disappeared since 2017, since the, yeah. since the Tic Tac. I think and ab abductions and crop circles are the two that used to be front and center in the ufo discussion and they both seem to be put to be down. fading away and it, like it's like the background. well who's causing that what because like you know you go to these conferences to even the woo woo stuff and the crazy stuff you go to these conferences to hear you can pick and choose i i do not watch or go into any uh abduction stuff but i will definitely go into structures on mars even though like do i believe it i don't know but i'll I'll go check it out i mean it's interesting it's fun to theorize it's fun to theorize and who knows like that doorway is kind of cool have you seen that yeah. image yeah yeah of, of the doorway yeah although I, I think it's actually really small oh like they don't because there's no real perspective issue Maybe and i was reading about it small, man. and i think it's actually really tiny Maybe yeah. like little tiny, like two inch people. Well, if something happened to Mars where their atmosphere basically got blown into fucking space, like I would imagine you wouldn't be able to see shit, if, especially exactly if like a billion years ago. So, right. Uh, uh, everything would be covered know, in dust. Everything would be covered in dust. And the planet is literally rust. It's rusting. It's a rusting planet. So, uh, yeah. And there's a big gouge in it. A big giant gouge. It could be a natural canyon or what the hell. Or what if the crust opened up somehow, you know. Got what hit by something. Got hit by something. Boom. You remember Boom from uh, those old infomercials? They dip, the, dip stuff in it and it takes all the rust off. What if you took all the rust off of Mars? Mm. You'd see. Uh, what would it look like? Aliens. Pyramids. Everywhere. Pyramids. Pockmarked with, pockmarked with pyramids. Uh, but the, the really interesting stuff is we saw Graham three times. Yep. All right. So we saw him oh. as part of a panel and two solo panels. And then we saw uh, Hugh Newman three times. Cause, uh, his, his first one was like, it was all right. I'm it's not, okay. you know, crop circles are not, you know, they're awesome. Looking. They're cool looking. I think they're really cool looking. There's uh, a lot of crop circles actually popping up right now. Recently, I don't know if you guys yeah, have seen them. Yeah. Yeah. They're popping up again. Uh, I think it's. I think it's man-made stuff. I, I think it's like uh, it's like graffiti, where an mm -hmm. artist will go out that knows how to do it, do it really well or poorly or however it is, and the art itself is what you know. They pretty, don't. They are pretty cool. Variety. Looking. They don't get uh, you know. They don't get fame off of it. They just get their art pieces and people talking about their art. So I feel like that's a, a draw for people to go yeah. out and do it. And they look crazy. Like how they how people are, have figured out how to make these geometric shapes in such a large scale is awesome like it's really cool somebody needs to do crop circle at clarkson's farm see how he reacts to it do a whole episode uh, uh so, Jeremy. so wait what, what do you think it is gary uh um, humans also humans i think it's a tradi tradition that goes back to the 1600s he mentioned he went all the way through it, it was he really went cool. all the way through it what his his hypothesis is a lot of them is humans, but there's some that are just that popped up that are absolutely unexplainable. And they're, I mean, 
there's craziness. There's a giant, you know what a mandala is, right? A mandala. Yeah. So mm-hmm. um, the one he didn't do, I don't know if X-ray girl, if you can Google this, I think it was in a, it was in a desert dry lake bed in Oregon or help me out chat. There's a giant mandala from the early nineties that was etched into a giant, uh, into a dry lake bed here in America. And the thing is fracking huge. Mm-hmm. And it was a, a air force pilot who found it and took a picture cool. of it. Uh, something like that would be like really difficult, especially since there's no tracks anywhere right in the picture um so there's there's some that are unexplainable but most are done by human yeah and, and wow. in the 90s too wow yeah, yeah. Now, this had to be done because this is an actual symbol from from uh i can't remember some culture <laughs> some foreign <laughs> culture um but so i mean probably human how the how fuck did, did they, they do, do that though because this how thing is yeah. massive it's massive very cool. Very yeah, impressive. It's, it's a Sri Yantra mystery, and that's the symbol right there. It's freaking huge, that's, and that's, that's not easy to do. And by the way, they dug it into the earth. This isn't like putting down a crop. This is etching it into dry lake bed in the middle of a desert. Been there wow. 27 years as of the article. Buddhism. Thank you. Thank you, Buddhism. It takes a lot of skill. Dang. Some culture. Some so wait, culture. So we don't know how long it was there. So it could have been there for yeah, we don't know. We years, don't know. decades. But like, yeah, I mostly think it's people. I think they're really fucking cool looking. And maybe, you know, maybe one or two is just a UFO landing. Like the circle ones, the perfect circle ones. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's a because we've seen that. Like even in Rendlesham, they talk about uh, Nick Pope talked. Oh, he let something slip about Rendlesham. But um, there's like landing tracks at Rendlesham and there's other places where there's landing, like where the pads hit down and they have fucking pictures of it. And there's divots in the ground, uh, charred grass and stuff. Um, but yeah, Nick Pope, who is bound by, you know, uh, uh, government secrecy. Go, yeah. He, he cannot divulge much cause he actually worked for the government in the UFO field. Unless something's been declassified, he can't really talk about it. So he can't talk about Rendlesham at all. Except for when he says, uh, you know, um, uh, just this weekend, NASA had a four hour meeting, which I'm not going to go through because I know they're not going to say anything because NASA is now involved in Arrow or UTIP, whatever the fuck they're calling it now. And they want to be involved, which I, I just doubly don't trust. And they're talking about having crash, ret- like actual parts of a UFO. Like they've been dancing around this forever in, in, in the UFO field and they won't admit it. They won't ever admit it because if they start to admit that, yes, we have a piece of a UFO, we have some flots and we have a whatever, then that makes it, that's tangible. That makes it real. And then they go to oh well, what are you doing with it? Well, we all think they're backwards engineering stuff and they just can't figure it out. That's been pretty much, that's what I believe is like, we've found some stuff. And we and we're dumb monkeys and we don't know what to do with it. And we probably I believe that we're probably ten thousand years away from ever figuring out what to do with it. Um, But he said that they found stuff that they have stuff from Rendlesham, which I have never heard. Now I know the Rendlesham story inside and out. A lot of stuff has come out. And I remember when it first happened, it ended up on I believe it was in search of. I believe it was on in search of. When you when they first talked about it, and uh, this was in the early '80s, a uh, a UFO came down at Rendlesham Forest. It was witnessed by uh, three or four um, military. This was around Christmas. Uh, military people, I forgot what their ranks were. One guy did an audio recording of the entire incidents while it was happening. He'd always take a tape recorder story, out with yes. him, and there is recordings of it. Um, uh, Jim Penniston is the one who touched it saw the symbols and was supposedly downloaded some binary code. He's the one who thinks it's us from the future, by the way. Uh, But what we learned much later on, which they did not admit in the eighties, it's only recently, I'm going to say in the last 10 years, they admitted it, that there were nukes there. What? Because there were not supposed to be nukes there. The the U S military told uh, the British public anyway, that there were not nuclear weapons at Rendlesham force, but there were, and they were being stored there. Uh, so they buzzed the nuclear silos. That's why the UFOs Checking were there. It. And it was multiple days this happened. It I happened like the theory of it, it, of it being us in the future coming back That's, to check. Now, that would be that would make even more sense for why they haven't contacted us. They're just like, 
going doot, doot, like Rendlesham. Checking on stuff. Uh, I'm not allowed to. Past. Adam, you're aware of the Rendlesham Forest in- incident? No, I, I don't know about it. Okay, I, I, maybe called, maybe I have heard about it, but uh, tell me a it's little more. Top five UFO lore. So okay. I think it was uh, during a Christmas party. Uh, some military police got called out for a light that's flying around in the forest near their Air Force base that's in uh, that's in the UK. Okay. And when they get there, uh, and and correct me if I'm wrong, chat, but uh, they they had some sightings on it. I think a day before plus members of the public witnessed it outside of the air force base. And it was oh. just a ball of light, but it got caught on radar and it was a uh, Floyd. It's a very small, it was, it was about as big as a small, like VW, like a really small car. So like a pro probably. Okay. And it uh, pulsated. And uh, yeah, when the guy got out there, one of the sergeants, if, I'm going to get that rank wrong, but whatever. Um, brought out his tape recorder and is commenting like on what he's saying. And you like, he's like, this is weird. There's a red light out there and it's coming to the ground. And um, yeah, it like comes to the ground. One guy touches it. Uh, it takes off. It leaves physical evidence on the ground. <clears throat> and uh, it, this gets hushed up. This gets hushed up, but like it, it, like it got out almost immediately. Like, you know, they tried to hush it up. Uh, they tried they try they, they interviewed everybody and they're like you didn't see anything and none of them play ball like they're like no we fucking saw something yeah. we're gonna go and they went public with it uh and uh yeah it, it just blew up and then much later on we find out there's nuclear weapons there so this goes along with the uh nuclear weapon silos and bases housing nuclear weapons getting buzzed by ufos this is just one of many and that goes across the ussr and usa the former ussr and usa and those are if some Garrett, of those- if, let's look at Garrett's theory there, right? If if they know that something terrible may have happened by someone falling on a button and then someone seeing that the, a nuke was launched and then they hit the button and then all of a sudden all these nukes are going towards and then Earth faces, I don't know, an extreme catastrophe on our own hand and then finally crawl back and then are able to and you know it takes thousands of years and they're like man if we only just didn't do that why why if they already have that technology right if they can time travel why would they care about this moment then i my hey this is my theory is we're so far in the future we figured out time travel somehow wherever it, however it happens right okay we're at the point where it's just scientists going back in time and verifying history so they go okay uh america said they had this much in the public record and in the record that we find let's go check okay we go back in time and go okay no they had this much okay now let's go check the ussr okay they had this much and then we go check this one okay they had that much and then they write it down back in the future right and then they do so, and all the so, other things and they check. <laughs> that's why they see ufos they fly around or whatever it's just us checking from the future are Is those there- are those the same scientists that are cutting cutting out the uh, cow anuses yeah, they're just checking the like. Hey, Ew. what what what, are, what were cows? What were people? That was a thing, cows? X-ray. Did you not hear about that? I Take remember it. I don't want to yeah, remember. It. About. <laughs> sorry, sorry oh, for um, the yeah, Rendlesham Forest happened uh, December twenty sixth through twenty eighth, so it was like a post Christmas party Boxing. in the eighties in nineteen eighty. So it just had its fortieth anniversary in two thousand twenty. Um. Uh, early on the 26th and 28th of December, United States Air Force, USAF, security personnel stationed at nearby RAF Woodbridge had reported seeing strange lights in a surrounding forest. Uh, forestry worker Mr. Thurcutel, Thurcuttles announced an unidentified visitors asked if he had seen any previous night. Uh, I said, no, he recalls. Uh, they said, did you leave the house at all? Did you see anything? He said, what? Uh, I don't know why they're quoting this random guy, uh, but here we go. So, it sorry, it's Lieutenant Colonel. Sorry, but, you know, again, I'm not in the military. I don't. Lieutenant Colonel. That's... Lieutenant Colonel uh, Charles Halt is the guy who did the recording. Okay. Uh, was one of the servicemen who claimed to have witnessed the UFO at Rendlesham Forest. Uh, so, and this is a BBC article, so I'm fuck them, but uh, I just need to get the names right. I don't care what their take is on it. They're, uh, they're state run media. I don't read state run media. So, at history.com.uk, so like the UK version of it, 
d- down into the article. I was just kind of skimming through it. And it says um, it might have actually been a hoax. One U.S. former U.S. security policeman claimed responsibility for causing it by modifying the lights on his police vehicle and driving around the forest. That's bullshit. I agree, too. Why, why would you have a police? Why would a U.S. security policeman have a police vehicle in the U.K.? And exactly. didn't we hear the other, like there were civilians oh, that saw for it. For one, and uh, above how did the, the police lights land? <laughs> and yeah, yeah. and then that. take off when someone Touch touched the, the light. light. Uh, unless they were also in on it. Unless they were all in on it. A, a lieutenant colonel from the Air Force, and by the way, these are people who are guarding nuclear weapons, and they kept their fucking secret about the nuclear weapons until the government came out with it. So My yeah. skepticism is that it came from government people. Like anytime... It's government people, even including like the Tic Tac stuff from, uh, from believe, the Air Force. Yeah, I'll believe. I'm like, I'm still like, it's the government telling I'll believe me, a pilot. I'll believe an MP. He's got people. That but like Lou Elzondo, whose like job was basically spreading misinformation in countries. <laughs> I'm not going to believe, believe in that guy. I'm not going to believe that guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm the opposite of, of Garrett. I, I think this is technology from the past. I think we we. It was either from the people that future. Well, I think um, I don't know. I don't know what it is now. Like what? Who's riding around in these things? It might be the people that are actually in the government that are trying to reverse engineer the stuff that may have been figuring it out and uh, was taking it for a joyride or testing mm-hmm. it. And they're like, "Well, we got to we got to test this to to try to make it work." And maybe they're getting to the point where you know it's kind. of because because Bob Lazar claims that one of them was found in an archaeological dig, and if that's true, let's just humor it and say it is true, and they found it. Uh, there's supposedly some some ship underneath the Sphinx, like deep down underneath the Sphinx. There's some supposed to be some sort of like an ark of some sort. I, I always mm-hmm. found that really interesting. But what if we had this technology in the past, and we were just getting to the point of all right, next year our first ever interstellar ship is going to be uh, put together. We're going to get it done. Oh, shit. Here comes the younger Dryas. And then, boom, you know, wipe out all of Earth, essentially. I mean, Earth got devastated from that event. Like, there's no question about it. And if we had that technology and suddenly, you know, I don't know how many humans were left after that whole event finally subsided but i mean they Nick, probably oh, wouldn't understand it i mean you, no, you take our phone so take, if we're yeah, exactly that that's, here here's a phone yeah, yeah. a, a hundred years ago they're gonna a hundred yeah. years ago they're gonna be like what the hell is this Wait, yeah it, they're like it's a rock Nick pope brought that up he's like you you, you know if, yeah. if you take out a modern phone and take it 10 years ago people will be going whoa well, that's you know, exactly no they'll be all what the hell and ten thousand years ago it's like that's a pretty rock yeah that's what he said. no no you're a freaking uh witch i'm gonna kill well, you and burn this thing a thousand years ago well, if you that's go, if you oh, a thousand a thousand years, years right. ago you will be burnt and at the stake for having right 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 um yeah absolutely uh, but like, and and you know what? I I am a firm believer in the uh, what form of technology. I'm not sure. I don't think it was made out of metal or plastic. I'll just say that. But I'm the firm believer in old technology being held over for thousands of years and yeah. actually explain some some cert, you know wizards, mages, whatever, or unexplainable things. And if there was just remnants of technology that uh, it was just passed down through lore from a previous civilization, who would be in control of it? Well, the elites, whoever the elites of the time are, would be at uh, the Vatican or we go further back, uh, a king, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Sargon of Akkad. I don't know. Like that, that's, that's who would be in charge of it. You know, King Solomon. Yeah. That's who would be in charge of the quote unquote tech. Uh, And maybe there's leftover tech i i think that's completely believable maybe that's what the arc was it's just maybe leftover instructions leftover tech we don't know well what would that tech do Why would like they not use it what, what would it show the people right that there's evidence of a greater civilization right there's something bigger than the king the king can't have that king is the, on the top he needs the people to look up to him and be but like, if he had it, wouldn't he use it and be like, look at the king? If you couldn't know. figure it out, if you what can't if, reverse engineer something that makes no sense, so, it, so guess, yeah. 
How like, do I turn this phone on? What does this thing exactly. do? Like Bob Lazar said that basically the 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 UFO he was working on, they knew how to turn it on. That was it. Yep. Mm. They knew so it's like to- they it's like they got an iPhone and the iPhone died, like it ran out of juice, and they just didn't know how to like how do we turn this thing back? Okay, you can turn it on, but I can't unlock it. I don't know but, how uh, yeah, that's, to get that, inside of it. There is uh there is a lot of evidence of we'll just say some weirdness that we'll go over. Like a lot uh, of weirdness. A lot of weirdness as far as just similarities around the world, things they knew, the pineal gland, and uh I'll get what, into what did my, you hear uh, about the pineal gland? I, I'll I'm get curious into my, about that. I'll get so, into my sperm impact theory. Yes. Yeah, you uh, what? The <laughs> my sperm impact theory. That's not helping us in our it's not I, our, I'm less interested in that. Um <laughs> Dr. Garrett's very interested in that. <laughs> Garrett's got a lot of his uh never mind. I'm not going there. No, very, sorry. Happy uh too, June. <laughs> too soon. Uh so Graham went into it in his uh basically the entire the sperm uh, impact or the no, pineal no, gland. The psychoded- psychedelic panel or not panel, his uh ayahuasca panel. His uh, well, it, discussion about it, it was it was psychedelics in the thought, past. It's psychedelics in the past, and ha- what what it meant to ancient civilizations. Yeah, I thought it was just going to be like, hey, this is and what life you could after do. But death. But he really went in went in depth on the connections across the world of how different cultures used psychedelics and how the how they interpreted their experiences and how they were all connected. Like there are so hmm. many different connections. From South America and Egypt and uh, like everywhere of these very similar uh, paintings, carvings, uh, experience Even buildings. And, and yeah, uh-huh. there's their structure is very very similar. Uh, it was an interesting, very interesting lecture. Yeah, uh, it was way more interesting. That I, I'm because I usually don't like when him and Joe Rogan go on and on about ayahuasca. I love it. I don't. But um, breaking news, everyone: humans just like to get fucked up. Yes. No, but see, that was but the there's difference. There's way more to it. There's yeah. way. I know. I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. I, like, yeah, yeah. Well, he mentions that too. He's like, hey, some, you know, like Hugh Newman did too. He's yeah, like, he people like to get drunk and fucking high. There's, there's no about. But there's like, there's a higher level of the psychedelics in what what Graham. I love. He started his lecture by saying, "I don't think kids should ever touch this stuff." Yeah. He's all this is for adults, and I a thousand percent agree like uh psychedelics are not this safe thing all right they're not great serious they should be and, taken and just seriously like, uh i think you can both say like i i agree with this i think <clears throat> at this point most drugs should just be legal most not all um and they should be for adults uh and it's for the adults to decide and i don't even know i don't think it's for the government to fucking regulate fuck the government but yeah. um but keep them the fuck away from kids because uh, I just know f- from, you know, personal, a lot, a lot of personal experimentation that uh, psychedelics can be extremely harmful. Uh, I think I think it could be extremely harmful to adults, too. You got to be in the right state of mind for the right state of mind. Yeah, yeah. And uh, not everyone can it should ever even touch them. Yeah, there's, no, some there's people certain, that definitely should not. No, and it, I, I agree um, with in the chat. Uh, I think it's I think 25 and older is where the line should be. It shouldn't be 21 that's arbitrary. It shouldn't be 18 that's arbitrary. 25 is when your brain is fully yep. developed. I think yep. that is the only time that it should be okay. Cuz at that point your your brain's fully developed. You've learned everything you've learned. That's usually when you get out of college. Your uh like physically your brain is done developing. That is when you can kind of go on this journey and find those psychedelic things and then open your brain to uh, you know the possibilities and connecting with the universe and that kind of stuff up until that point you're messing with your actual brain building itself and forming yeah and brain if you have i mean certain conditions like yeah, bipolar could, or something like that i it, it, it would, you might not come back i've seen people not come back so me too like too. it's it's a crap shoot and uh it, so they they're like graham said it's very dangerous it's a thing it's a serious serious uh molecules and things they affect your brain very they can affect your brain in very serious ways positive negative so they need to be taken seriously yep that's it but that he started out with that like making that clear distinction like keep these the fuck away from kids basically and uh these are these are for adults 
And even the ayahuasca trip is not this pleasurable thing at first. It takes you a while. You're going to get sick. You're going to shit your pants. You know, like he, yeah. he, he gives, you know, uh, warts I mean, and all. You're poisoning your body. You, know, you are poisoning it, your body. It literally is. Yeah. But you're inter- uh, introducing something else that's not your brain in all, all your. But once he starts throw, throwing up like, uh, you know, artists, artists who have, you know, shamans who have made ayahuasca and tripped on it and who are artistic and can like actually put up what their visions look like. It's fucking trippy, man. Mm. It is trippy how similar things are. Uh, and maybe it's just how it affects our human body. Not really sure. Maybe we are actually contacting entities. I thought it was really interesting that one of the entities that was contact was a form of a dog was a fox. Yeah. Fox head in a business suit, which would talk. I mean, to go to Skinwalker, one of the one of the one of the things that pe- uh, that was witnessed at Skinwalker was Ooh, two yeah. dogs, anthropomorphic dogs, basically people with dog heads yeah. smoking cigarettes. Oh, and I was like, yeah. whoa. And 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 he's saying that a lot of the visions, a lot of the entities you see are anthropomorphic. And he so, goes all the way back to cave drawings of yeah, humans that have animal heads and uh, gods from Egypt and gods from all yeah. these different cultures. They have this kind of, anthropomorphic body and they have these animal heads and the, like even in greek myth the the minotaur it's a human body with a bull's head and he's saying like that could be them interpreting their psychedelic experiences and then using that in art and the egyptian and tree of life that was depicted on somebody's tomb uh was basically the dmt tree <laughs> so like yeah. uh and and all a lot of uh, I think all of the Egyptian Egyptian deities uh, have anth- are mm-hmm. anthropomorphic. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 trip. It's it's a trip. He's what Graham is very good at is just pointing out similarities around the world because because yeah. what he has done what most and I mean most arche- archaeologists haven't traveled around the world. A lot of them will travel, but the one place they'll spend their lifetime on one place. Or but he goes everywhere. He's uh, he spent seven years scuba diving, uh, looking for ancient ruins under the ocean and, and well, submerged in in oceans and seas, we'll say. So uh, I think he's really good at putting that stuff together. And uh, somebody said in, in the chat says all psychology. That is fascinating to me. That is fascinating to me that so many disparate cultures that are perceived technically to be completely separate, different continents completely do the same drug, have the same molecule go into their brains, and they see very similar things. That's fascinating. How now, is that, is that proving that they're going to somewhere? Or I don't, that I don't know. We're, I, all, I, we're all basically similar as far as like how our bodies are put I'm not together? Even saying, that, I'm not even saying that. I'm not even saying like they're all going to the same place. I'm saying that well, I'm curious. we're all what experiencing do you the same thing. Like right. our brains mean? are wired a certain way. So is it is it just our instincts and our brains that we're very connected to animals? So we see a human with an animal head. So here's the thing. Like that's so cool. Uh, I've never like I've doesn't even have to be I've a I've never done thing. acid alone. I've done acid with a bunch of people and we've never tripped on the same thing ever. So I think that it's is very different. rare. I think it's extremely rare. And I've done shrooms, never tripped with, um, we never saw the same thing. That's what's different about saw DMT. similar, like acids, not as it's, you're not supposed to like, if you've got a bad acid, if you're having hallucinations, hallucinations, but if you're seeing like the wall, like breathe, that's, that's what acid does. If you look at the, you know, the cottage cheese ceilings, those are a fucking trip. You can trip on those things for oh. hours on acid. Uh, <laughs> acid's bad. Don't do it. Uh, YouTube requires me to say that and i i yeah it's not a doctor it's pretty bad i'm not a doctor uh but uh we're i was gonna bring up oh gobekli tepe they were brewing beer bar uh yeah, like a yeah. beer there psychedelic what? beer so Miller really? was yes. right there were women <laughs> present when they were brewing <laughs> beer at gobekli tepe but was it only women or just women, men no, and women? The men, all right. the men were brewing no the beer. Titties. No titties, though. Yeah. They were all covered up. They were very respectable women. No, their titties not, were out. Not scantily clad. <laughs> it was, it was, go back to the tap. Because oh, yeah. even out. back then, they knew sex sells. That's right. Well, th- that was an interesting thing, too, about a, a lot of the 
uh, that psychedelics and and the uh, Gobekli Tepe stories and going through all of that, everything is related to fertility. Like uh, Karahan Tepe, they have that area that is just like penises with a, like a snake head that's coming out. And then there's a, a a portal in the, not a portal, like, you know, but like a portal, a porthole in the rock where the sun comes through on the solstice and hits this face. Well, the, the whole thing. And they only like recently discovered that. Oh, yeah, only recently. That's at Karahan Tepe, and it hasn't been seen, obviously, for 10,000 years. And it's just because Hugh Newman and his girlfriend uh, got there early, mm-hmm. accidentally. And uh, they saw at the, I think it was winter solstice, solstice yeah. that that light goes, there's a hole in the ground. The light shoots right through it and hits the face in Karen Tepe. The snake, and they think it's a woman or it could be a man. Amazing. They're not sure. So, But uh, what I'm saying is like a lot of these old uh, megaliths are towards uh, every having having children and the whole fertility thing is a male, and male they're and also female, like oriented towards some kind of solstice and they're they're yeah, magnetic some... north. Uh, and this is people who I mean have no language, couldn't count, uh, supposedly, right? supposedly. And Bullshit. uh, and, oh, dude, they're finding, I mean, these are this is cities now. We're we're into like these are giant fucking cities now. They might area go Beckley Tepe, that whole region, the in, in Turkey is definitely an entire city. Well, yeah, now because they show they're they, finding they structures. Maps, they're fr- no, no, city. no. They found a building at one of them that's up, but it's up further north. That's actually near a river. A lot of the like Gobekli Tepe is not near any bodies of water, but there there is signs of them having wells and mm-hmm. and uh, you know digging trenches and having you know like plumbing basically. But this one house that they found this is a, a this is a an eleven thousand year old house that that had rooms. That was built up, and underneath each room had a little uh, path, like like a little thing dug through it, mm-hmm. so the river could flow through under each room and cool each room. Yeah, that's cool. Cool. Yeah, so air that's conditioning, pretty rad. And like, uh, it's air conditioning eleven thousand years ago, and this is all well, new. So technically, it's water conditioning, but it, they could blow no, because the water. <laughs> just kidding. Air, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> air conditioning requires water buddy um so no nah. well, well you wouldn't know you're in sweden you don't have air conditioning i i did heating and air conditioning for two years did you you Ever? were in arizona yeah. no but i, I ran it one. i ran i helped run an agent i own two and they fucking leak <laughs> do, you, do you know what's leaking out of it uh it is water it's condensation water. but it's because of the freon that's inside not because yeah, not. you have to okay, yeah because you have to cool it yes I replaced them in cars. Okay. Um, so that's 11,000 years old. And then I, what was the name of the place? He said there's a place they just found. And in the next five years, this will be the new Gobekli oh, Tepe. Yeah. Like they've already found the new Gobekli Tepe. It will blow everything yeah. from Gobekli Tepe away. They just found it and they're moving an entire fucking town to get to it. They found it under a house. They so found under it a house, under a house. like a crawl space. And in that crawl space, it is a. Uh, there's like uh there's designs on the wall there's a there's a well that's down there and the family had covered it and the, up and uh, never uh, told anybody because the ta- they knew apparently the town has known about it for a thousand years yeah the whole time and they they've just never told anybody because they knew they would come and tear up their fucking and town. do what they're doing now is at telling least them to in move. more recent times in more recent times they knew like if we if we tell anybody about this and what did they do they're making everybody move, and apparently they're, the Turkish government's completely fucking them. They're, not, they're giving not giving them giving enough, them enough money, to, money move. to move, but they have to move anyway. Um, and what's happening is these archaeologists are coming in. They're 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 hip to like Graham and like Graham's banned from Egypt. Yeah, straight up banned. Graham's banned. From Seriously? Egypt. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And um, and Andrew Collins and uh, Hugh Newman are banned from all these the sites. The, problem, the thing is, they were there first before the archaeologists, so they know all the people who own the Hugh land. Hugh Newman discovered like a bunch of stuff. He was the he's guy. He's the guy that's going around. He discovered uh, these like uh, the megaliths. These uh, oh, he found he, a bunch of dude, tea posts. He, and he's like, hey, there's he a described it as being in in Mexico and South America in the 1800s when they so there's there's T pillars everywhere laying around the fucking ground, and they're just going to be there forever. The, this place is so unexcavated. So 
Karahan Tepe is 1%. 1%. And it's bigger than Gobekli Tepe. It's bigger. Yeah, it's bigger. And they've, there's 18 more sites that they know of, and they are going to be bigger. And and some are going to, it's going to start getting older. So Gobekli Tepe will yeah. not be the oldest. Yeah. Uh, anymore. Wow. How, how are the archaeologists going to deal with that when they keep finding older and well, older and older structures? Klaus Schmidt, who what are they basically do? discovered, rediscovered Gobekli Tepe. People discovered it, but they didn't know what it was. Then Klaus Schmidt excavated it, did tons of work on it before he died, and said this thing is deliberately buried. Now the new guy came in and said, well, it was kind of deliberately buried, but it collapsed in on itself. So you can see how like they really don't want to give up their paradigm. And it's like, at, at this point, so I think silly. we've we've really moved past the academic. Now, I, the, the, Graham likes, in a lot of senses. Graham doesn't like to play nice, but a lot of them try to play nice. Like, hey, we need archaeologists. And if you're going to be an archaeologist, you're going to be open-minded. That's cool. That's great. But if you're just trying to reinforce a paradigm that will fall apart eventually, it's eventually going to fall apart. And you're just trying to you're trying to reinforce the same shit that these that these universities did a th- uh, you know, a couple hundred years ago, a hundred years ago when this started. It's just flipped. You're you're instead of um like running as far away from Christianity as you possibly can, you've become the new dogma. You're the new fucking dogma now. You're the new religion. And, uh, you know, there's the, the truth is somewhere in between, like we've talked about on this channel. Like, like there is stuff from the Bible that they said was complete myth that they found. Mm-hmm. You know, they've just, you know, Jericho exists. Like civilizations you know, that they yeah. thought were myth from the Bible for millennia, they found facts they were like, oh, look, uh, this pottery is actually describing this very civilization, these group of people, this town, this city. It does didn't, exist. Not just didn't, they just, didn't they just find some some like ancient uh, biblical pool or like an underwater uh, underground pool somewhere? Oh, oh, I don't I didn't hear about that. Find it. I, I need to go. Oh, yes. I, I'd like something, to do some research so, on that. Yeah, and find a, find a lot of those because apparently there's a bunch of new discoveries that are proving like old biblical facts. So I'd like to do some yeah research it's, on that. It's crazy, and again, it's interpretation. And like, I'm not trying to disrespect it. It's like th- what what academia is trying to do is run away as far as possible from any Abrahamic religion, mm-hmm. like yeah. all of them, you know, and. and and gradualism just doesn't work anymore. Like something happened, whether it's plasma from the sun, a comet, a meteor, asteroid, fucking don't know. Uh, but something happened during the Younger Dryas that's really weird. And it's like, you can't just go, well, you know, ice ages start and stop immediately, yeah. geologically speaking, all the time. No, they don't. No, something has to happen. And it has to be a certain type of thing that happens that cools the earth very fast and then warms it really fast. And again, geologically speaking, but like, you know, with the younger Dryas, uh, Randall is at is at a point where like some of this shit happened in a couple of weeks. Now it didn't cool in a couple of weeks, but the flooding happened in a couple of weeks, mm. maybe even shorter. Like imagine that, like your entire world going dark for a thousand years in a couple of weeks. That could happen. That could That's happen. terrifying. This is terrifying. Know, we we talked about isostatic depression affecting basic like think about where the ice was sitting okay in, in i got my globe here hold on get your globe so, all right so okay for one for real quick they need to make a pre-ice age one a, a dirty yeah. ice age one can, can right, you right, right. Happen, adam please so so here's north america actually right here so imagine the ice is sitting right here right all of that ice sheet and this is where the meteors would have hit it so the way that Randall talks about it is that all of that ice was weighing down the earth, basically bulging out like a ring. This whole ring around it was just like bulging out. And out here in the ocean, which actually this is Atlantis. So this is where the, the Azores are. They're yep. like right here somewhere. So they would actually be up higher. So they would actually be able to be um, seen. And, and it's basically this huge ring. So once this all melted and that land rebounded up, sinking all of this so now if you if you actually i can't actually turn it because it's in there but i'm looking like turkey's right here so if that rebound if that were to have some sort of ripple effect would all of these things that they're finding go back to tepe all the tepes would they have been a lot lower maybe actually on water 
you know, uh, the rivers were flowing through know. there. Maybe. Like, think about that, right? Because if this was pushed all the way down and this whole thing was bulged out, then, like, what did this all look like? The, the next area over. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, just thinking they, about they that. Know, they know pretty much for a fact, like, what's been underwater and what hasn't. And a lot of the Earth has been underwater at some point within the last million billions like texas was underwater yeah um but uh like the the, the hip, most mountain ranges are again geologically speaking are relatively new so that's weird that that's weird so i i the answer is i don't know but i think ben put it best last week when he said it's based you know like sitting on a beach ball that's what they sitting on a beach ball and then you get up and right. it goes back to more of a sphere uh and that would explain atlantis than the azores and but but no that i forgot the square mileage it's vast what graham said like how how much of the land has been submerged is is huge it's a lot it's it's a lot so to, to uh, i i love you know graham was just going off on archaeology it's funny he was roasting the shit out of him he's like you guys have not even really gone into the Amazon. There's been some archaeology, right, yeah. but not much. You guys have not gone into the Sahara Desert. There's been some, but relatively not much. Both of these put together are about as big as India and China. So you think you know the answer to all life on the planet, but you haven't really gone into India or China. And we don't know all the answers from China either or India. Yeah. So like that, that, that it's, and he's all, how dare you? How, you know, and everybody, all the crowds all woo. Yeah. Graham, <laughs> fuck archaeology. But, um, <laughs> but like, that's what I, I think that's, it's sad because it is, I, I think, I think it is important to have something like, you know, not necessarily archaeologists because they seem to be really dogmatic, but, uh, a, a institution that goes like, okay, we've assessed all of the, in the perfect world, we've assessed all of the facts that we found, and we think this is the best hypothesis. And then somebody comes up and goes, hey, well, we found this. And then they go, okay, well, let's let's have a new hypothesis. I think that's I, really good. I believe that's uh, what traditional oh. science used to be. That's what it used to be. Yeah. Right. But it's been perverted and distorted into this dog. Trust, trust they, the they, science. They, they, where it's like, if yes. you have anything that is against what I say is truth, then you are a Nazi. Nazi, you're a white what, supremacist what need. misogynist. They said he was a misogynist. For how do you get from you what get out of? Hey, we I think that there was a there was a impact and uh, at the end of the dry uh, younger dryas period, and maybe we had a civilization that was before this that might have been technologically more advanced than we thought it was, and then it passed down some knowledge to the uh, hunter gatherers or, or, or to the people that were trying to survive after that. Thing uh, misogynist. What? Uh, Garrett, the, 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 the lemmings that it's listen to these people the, the and believe believe them don't need evidence for anything because go, their oh, world oh, their worldview is science. being uh, reaffirmed and that's all they need. They're like, oh, awesome. Another person to hate and blame oh, for my a, issues. It's a, it's a zealot. They're zealots. Zealot. Yeah. Zealotry. He said it's on his website. I wonder if he's got it somewhere where I can find it. So uh, the Association of Archaeologists sent a letter to Netflix, Netflix asking them to redesignate ancient apocalypse into science fiction. And, <laughs> yeah. and Graham's response is on here somewhere. They, he goes to actual sites. Right. Like it's a documentary about actual sites on Earth. He goes to and talks about them. What? What is sci-fi about it at all? I don't know. Oh, and shit. he's asking questions. Can't read. That. Can you like control? Oh like, my goodness! It? Here you go. So in this association of American, Archaeology, can I read it? Can I read it in my in my um, Morgan Freeman voice? Nowhere, Morgan nowhere in Freeman. this do they actually refute any of the things that Graham says. Here, I'm going to give you the link, Adam. Yeah, give me the link so I can I can read it. So because like this thing is tiny like gavin's pee pee if they were go. if they were legit and they they were like okay we don't want you to have this show because we think it's factually incorrect here is a list of the things that graham claims and here are the facts that we supposedly have 
No. That's what you should have done. Oh, but wow. they didn't because they didn't have any Why answers. They just wanted to knock it all down. Jesus. Here, you share it, Adam. Um, just, yeah, I'm, I'm sharing it. Hold on. You messed it up. I Well, of course. I'm on a laptop, with, and I didn't bring my mouse, so I'm on the f- freaking finger pad. And I, yeah. Oh, I hate using it. It'll be I fine. It's, it's, it's easier for me to... Okay, let me find the, the correct one. I got to find... It's like scroll, underneath the down, big down, SAA's okay. three letters. You'll see the PDF of the... Yeah, there. Right holy there. shit. Here? Click on, click on the... Oh, my gosh. And you got to... Okay. Scroll I, don't, I don't know if I... Oh, I can't. I can't blow it up. Okay. Blow it up. <clears throat> okay, here we go. I'm, I'm switching to Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. Dear Mrs. Bahagio and Mrs. Core. I wrote this open letter to express the Society for the American Archaeology's concern over the series Ancient Apocalypse hosted by Graham Hancock, produced by ITN Productions, and aired on Netflix beginning on November 11th. The series publicly disparages archaeologists and devalues the archaeological profession on the basis of false claims and disinformation. I write to you and I write to encourage you to correctly classify the genre of the show, to provide disclaimers about the unfounded suppositions in the show, and ideally to balance the deleterious content in the show with scientifically accurate information about our human past. The Society for American Archaeology, SAA, is an international organization that, since its founding in 1934, has been dedicated to research about inter- interpretation and protection of the professional and advocation archaeologists. Archaeology students in Capodescapolon, I did. Protection of the Archaeological Heritage of the Americas. With more than 5,500 members, the SAA represents professional and Advocational archaeologists, archaeology students in colleges and universities, and archaeologists working at uh, tribal agencies, museums, ag- uh, government agencies, and the private sector. Yes, a, a, this is this is the uh, the bitch. Hello, let me switch switch my voice back. <laughs> so so basically, <laughs> okay. Wait, hold on. Call, this you find a part where they call him a. Uh, White supremacist and a misogynist. Yeah, control okay. It's not on the first one. I just it's not on the first one. Yeah, let me go to the next one. Oh my gosh. Graham, oh, Gra- gosh. Graham like responds. It's too long. We can't what read the, the whole thing. Going it's so small. That's, what, okay. that's what I can't said. I can't I can't actually make it bigger than this. That's all right, so just what you we'll trust you. Okay. And okay. Just, yeah, control. I'm F. just gonna read it. The the host like can I actually open this in a new tab? I don't know if I can. All right, no, Graham, I can't. Go. Okay, we have three principal concerns with regard to ancient apocalypse. One, the host of the series repeatedly and vigorously dismisses archaeologists and the practice of archaeology with aggressive rhetoric, willfully seeking to harm, uh, to cause harm to our membership and our profession in the public eye. Two. Netflix identifies and advertise uh, the series as docu-series, a genre that implies its content is grounded in fact when the content of the show is based on false claims about archaeologists and archaeology. The, it's so funny knowing that I've, I mean, I've, we've talked about at mm-hmm. this show at length. All right. And three, the theory it presents has a long-standing association with racist white supremacist ideologies does injustice to indigenous peoples and emboldens extremists wow i need examples I of what this i believe is. that's the line we are uh, looking for yeah you know, they they are so butthurt that their whole worldview is being challenged like what they've learned what they spent their hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. probably to get these doctorates in archaeology whatever their tenures like they don't want to lose their tenure. I I, I'm with X-ray. Lose your tenure I, on this, though, like I, fi- I find that wild. They just, I, I'm, you know, maybe not, but. But if, or, or just their standing. <laughs> Building. We're the extremists, by the way, that they're talking about. If you have, if he is making claims that are factually incorrect, why don't you, in this letter, say, a. 
And example, this is how or, he is incorrect. Or make a docu-series about that. Own. Debunking this. Yeah. Someone said it, though, in chat. It's all about the grant money. Mm -hmm. It's all about that mm -hmm. money, money. Yeah. It's all about that grant money. Yeah, and they're using sensationalized terms that they have heard That's in the point. media and think it's going to damage him. However, damage him. ancient apocalypse is more harmful than ancient aliens. It's further down, I just That's saw that sentence, and I was like, "That's pretty funny." Hancock's narrative emboldens extreme voices that mis misrepresent archaeolo archaeology archaeological knowledge in order to spread false historical narratives that are overtly misogynistic, chauvinistic, racist, and anti-Semitic. Anti oh my God! How? How? Please. Oh. Oh. Dude, how is it anti-Semitic? Book of adjectives that are really bad that were like Ooh. the whole no the whole time. This is my favorite thing about Randall and Jimmy and all these other uh, people that we've been watching is and Ben from um, uh, who was on last night or I last week. Excuse me, sorry, it's getting late for me. Um, they they do a great job of making you at like try to put it together yourself yeah. they're port they're putting all this stuff out there and going isn't that weird doesn't that f does that not fit the narrative no it doesn't what would it be is it this i don't know we we need to do more research like that's their main message and it's like that's that's just making more people wanting to get into archaeology exactly so yeah. um, maybe that's what it is too. They don't want competition. No, no, no. This is our field. We know this. We don't need any more archaeologists. And, want pseudo archaeologists, right? White saviors. Oh my god. White saviors. Even though, like the indigenous people have described, uh, not everywhere, but described some of the the mages or the watchers or the wise men or women who came out as 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 white. Like is having white skin like, and beards. It's and, not yeah. like Graham made it up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's they're the ones people. telling him. The, these archaeologists, this association, they're the ones that are discrediting ancient civilizations and cultures. They're the ones that said they're they have they're white discrediting skin. their own research, dude. Well, yeah. Like this is their research. So, yeah. It's so fucking dumb. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Oh my god. So yeah. But he, again, it doesn't matter to the people that are listening to them. They're like, all right, we we believe you. Yeah, we don't need to re do the research. We're just going to trust everything you say. I, I could say that everyone here has gone through that same, very same thing over some of the takes we've had. And that's the same stuff we hear. We never hear, yeah. uh, it, again, w when it comes to us, like Graham's making a theory. That's all he's doing. Like he's creating a theory. It's not even a hypothesis at this point. It's a theory. And, uh, you know, what, what we do in pop culture or what Adam does in culture uh, is, is the same thing. You know, I, I'm just like kind of giving you my opinion on what I'm seeing based on what, you know, knowledge I have of pop culture and culture, which is I'm not the expert or, or I'm not the arbiter of truth on anything. And I'm just putting it out there. And if somebody can like squash my theory with facts, okay, like go, do it, awesome. please. Great. I w I hope it's fucking wrong. I hope it's wrong. I don't want it to be right. By all uh, means. But uh, yeah. And then that's, that's, so, so that's it's an unscientific way to do, to have no, an argument. I, I was expecting them to calling come, name, I, I naming, was calling names, calling somebody names. That is the most unscientific way to discredit somebody's dude, argument. You're the archaeologist. Just you got the you got the throw, research right. Throw some facts out. <laughs> throw yeah, some science. Out. Science is it, questioning science is literally science. That's what yes. it is questioning the, yes. the narrative questioning everything like i don't i don't think that actually works i'm gonna try to replicate it and see if it actually does work yes. that's science yes. i want to question that i want to test it i want to doubt whatever it is because that's what it is that's how you love, get to the the answer i would love the archaeological association of america or whatever it is to have an exact one, two, three examples of why Graham is incorrect. I want to see that data. I want you to. Come I do too. Look at here's my documentary about like refuting all these things because if you can with facts say no, this doesn't make any sense because X Y Z. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. That's what see, I want that, to know. That's why I there, know to be, there needs to be breakaway institutions. They just need to be decentralized because this yep. is I mean, it's essentially a fucking union. Uh, it's collectivism. And yep. I doubt I doubt all archaeologists feel this way. 
So just go out on your own, be an individual. Like it sucks that you can't be a private one now, uh, but maybe, maybe in time, uh, you're, you know, maybe this is the future guys like Ben and yeah. uh, Hugh Newman are, and, and Graham and Randall are paving the way for more people to just go out and do it on. And Jimmy, own. And Jimmy talked and Jimmy, about that. Jimmy came out with a new video. Today. I got you, Jimmy. These, this guy, this guy, <laughs> Jimmy. What is, what is this? What? <laughs> you didn't, you didn't say yet. Jimmy in that list. Dude, I, I'm, just, I need, I'm giving you shit, dog. Everybody, uh, I'm just. I, I need everybody. <laughs> I'm, I'm just. Jimmy's I was just video? Did you watch Jimmy's new video today? No, did a Mr. new video Jimmy came out. Simp? Mr. Jimmy Simp didn't even know he had a new video today. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, I'm excited to watch it. I was gardening all day. All right, I was outside. <laughs> Listen to it. Oh, you were touching while you're hoeing. Well, I was. Okay. That makes you a very. I was pulling. Bad. I was pulling weeds bad youtuber we do not touch grass we don't okay touch grass. we stay in the i never I'm said i was i was good at youtubing <laughs> <laughs> yeah He's, how many strikes did you get in the last three years nine i've touched okay. nine blades of grass in the last two years <laughs> <laughs> hoeing is anti-semitic shit <laughs> It's racist Dude, and misogynist. I mean, yeah, the fact that they came out with those arguments like actually bolsters all of Graham's work. At, like it levels it's them true. up for me. It's like, oh, they they came at him with that. They came they came at him saying like I'm like they came at him like he said the last Jedi sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Any arguments? Is that what you're you're saying? Yeah. You're telling me. So what were you saying about uh, Jimmy's video? Oh, Jimmy's Jimmy's new video. What I haven't I haven't had time to watch it. I was at a conference. Oh, oh you haven't watched it either. But I knew about it because I follow him on Twitter. What and I, I like it. I, I follow him on Twitter too. But I, I, his new video is about that wall in Montana. Oh right? yeah. So, oh, oh, gotta watch that. He tweeted that today. Actually. He did. Yeah, what? he did. Oh, that's uh, good. Which is cool. Uh, so Jimmy, when Jimmy was on, if you haven't watched it, go watch a video uh, with Jimmy in it. Uh, he was talking about having some kind of organization where we get people that are skeptics and people that are uh, interested in these hypotheses and having them come together and fund digs and excavations so they yeah. can go, look, like, we want to, we're searching for truth. I think that's the both sides. Well, if, if you agree with them guys, or not, they're both trying to search. These for guys truth. are doing, they're breaking away from the institutions. They're like, Hey, we're going to run a tour. We're going to make videos. This funds our research and we get to like hang out with a bunch of people and go on these tours, have these fun Jimmy tours. Jimmy Corsetti of Bright Insight, if you don't know. Yes, yeah. That's what we're that's, talking about. You know what? That's a reality show I would want to watch. Fuck what, yeah. That would be fascinating. Well, I we, want to we got right? Ben. Ben makes a reality. Whenever Ben and Jimmy uh, or Brian Forrester or Hugh Newman make a video, like that's the, your show. And he, there's no like next there's a dirt road it's a dirt road what's at the end of the dirt road oh man oh Nothing. too much yeah <laughs> uh, i don't want i don't want another skinwalker yeah, oak island that's what i'm saying yeah that's, a, that's yeah what even what though saying. they are very in, like entertaining I love and i love them i love all the characters hey we saw a couple of skin we did uh skinwalker there range. was a couple of them there people um, there so it was cool. yeah like a very factual dry as you can just like a factual breakdown of these sites. Like if you can fund and get all these like money together, crowdfund it, man. People are doing it all the time. Crowdfund some money, go dig out a site and inspect it somebody, and analyze it and be like, this is the truth. Somebody mentioned Jimmy, the Greek. You guys aren't even going to know who that is. Uh, I can't see Jimmy from bright insight making football picks, but Jimmy, the Greek was one of the first people to ever be canceled back what way back in the day. Well, I think he dropped an end bomb or something. And, uh, Oh man. I mean, who who has it? <laughs> okay, I I never uh, have. Nope. Oh, okay, just me. Okay, I'm gonna report you to rank. Well, you're you're uh twenty five percent allowed. Yeah, which means a hundred percent according to Floodzilla. Which means he's twenty five percent. Yeah, Flood said I could say it. So. Yeah, Flood said you could say. It. Yeah, I've heard him say it. Ah, oh, you got I'll the. Say it. I'll say it again. You got the card. I won't say it now because I want to keep this channel. But yeah, you will on my channel. All right, noted. <laughs> <laughs> remember that yeah. remember that yeah. only on rumble only on rumble yeah because oh yeah we went to rumble that's true rumble yeah. we, we we can go crazy oh, I got you, bro. and we do and you we might do. see i would say it but i'm not gonna all say right it. right uh, but like but i heard it we're gonna go over more of this conference once i Racist. uh i'm gonna 
I'm going to clip out some of the stuff and we'll keep it themed. We'll do a UFO one, one time yeah, from yeah. Nick Pope's and then we'll go over Graham and, and Hugh Newman's panel. We also got to see a giant panel today, which mm -hmm. was, Fucking awesome. Like giants are like one of those things, like I'm not sure, but it really, I love, I love all the lore from it and it's super entertaining. So uh, Hugh Newman did a great giants panel today. Uh, but the, I think the most informative one was his Gobekli Tepe, Karahan Tepe one. And the best one by far was uh, ancient Graham Hancock's ancient apocalypse. Yeah. It was uh, a good time. Uh, it, it, you do like it's super informative and you're into it, but everything's so low key and the lights are down. You get really relaxed and uh, yeah, your eyes get a little heavy. So I just jacked myself up on coffee all weekend. But by the time we got back, you know, we're on Texas time. So it's like 10. So it was midnight for us. Yeah, I was tired. Sorry. But uh, there's there is um, uh, there is a uh, there is a, a a lot more to talk about. Like we could go on for hours and hours and hours, but we got some super chats to read. Soups. Right. Some soups. Um, and we're going to be back at it in two weeks. This is a crazy month. Okay. So next week we have the Dallas meetup mm -hmm. uh, for Friday night tights. Uh, Eric July is going to be there. Uh, Quarter black is going to be there. I'm going to be there. Ryan Kinnell is going to be there. X-ray girl is going to be yep. there. Uh, I think, uh, you know, at the, at the meetup, there will be other we're gonna have a culture casino comics yeah. division. Did we say comics? Divisions? Comics division is gonna, gonna be, be there. there. Yeah, you better uh, be there. You better people. be there. Ton of people. Um, and uh, yeah, Nick Weiser is gonna, gonna be there. Uh, I, I think Melanie There's... Max invited. Uh, Brittany Venti's invited. I'm sure she'll be there. And uh, I think yeah. before you sleep. So lots, lots of people going. Yeah. Did I forget anybody, Adam? Uh, Jimmy from Bright Insight will not be there, although Sadly. he's invited to go. Uh, and then the following weekend, yeah, we got a panel <laughs> on Saturday too. So that's on the pop culture side. Then the following weekend, we're in Asheville, North Carolina for the Cosmic Sun yeah. with Randall. And we're going to like have a little, like a little booth there or something. Like we'll be yeah. able to do a show from the Maybe events. some interviews. We'll see. Yeah, we're going to yeah. see how it works out. But uh, really looking forward to that one and seeing what a difference it like. This was like a really laid back, <laughs> let's frank frankly older crowd mm -hmm. okay very older um we'll see how how ash Asheville will be more grounded because it's going to be very yeah. very ancient stuff i'm civilization into. and that's that's i think that's where the most exciting thing things are happening but it right is now. clear even at this ufo centric convention graham was the one that brought the most energy in in the audience like there he, he was the only one that people got up and clapped and was standing oh at the beginning and at the end, uh, they wanted him to keep going at the end of his uh, lecture. That was he's definitely the like the rock star of this of these fields right now. So I, I'm like, well, and he and, should be the the centerpiece. And it of going and his special going on Netflix like leveled everything up. It did, and now it's up to like we definitely need younger blood, and the younger blood is out there, but it's on it's on YouTube and it's in podcasts. That's where the yeah. younger blood is. Um, and uh, there's, you know, again, it'll be fragmented, but, it'll, you know, hopefully we can all get together and get along and get more people into it and find out what, like, what, we, what the truth is, whatever it is. If, if it's gradualism, okay, let's, let's prove it. Let's prove it. Let's, yeah. let's find out what it is. Um, but it's awfully strange that all the megafauna died out relatively at the same time. The Clovis people were completely wiped out. Um, and as far as the giant stuff goes, I think, were there bigger people? Like, I, I personally do not believe there was like 36 foot men and women walking around, but uh, I definitely could see seven, and eight foot. Like, oh, yeah, dude, there were really, some people there that were fucking tall as shit. Yeah, that, that was a there little was like ridiculous. three people that were super tall. So, like, th those are just regular people. But there was like maybe there was a race of man that, yeah, grew, yeah, grew to eight feet tall regularly and, yeah, and they just died out because naturally died out. people that are really tall they have more problems they didn't survive them. the cataclysm along with a lot of the larger megafauna like I, okay like i'm open to it maybe they had to eat more so they died out we haven't found clovis people yet we know they're around but we haven't found them so uh wg has gifted 10 neurotic memberships for 50 dollars. <laughs> wg you, see you in Asheville, dude love you brother WG. WG. Uh, Warren Smith has gifted 10 neurotic memberships for $50. And then WG comes back in again. Say what? 
Warren, thank you so much, by the way. Thank you, Warren. Appreciate it. Wow. Um, you got a uh, pretty pretty gay um, uh, a members exclusive video, <laughs> which is like. Oh, pretty- yeah. You don't say that about us. Okay. That's true love. <laughs> WG. <laughs> WG again. WG. Two parts for one. Hundred dollars. Holy shit. Oh my god. Here's a little donation to help you celebrate Gary Pride Month. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, son of a bitch. <laughs> um WG on the Streamlab side for 50. Come on, WG. Make it a rain. <laughs> Making it an acid rain. Uh, is it true that quarter black was abducted by a UFO instead of an anal probe? Uh, they just let, they just surgically attached man bun onto his head. Hashtag the truth from. is out there. Bro, the that's where it came from is out there. Uh, we kind of saw where man buns came from. That, uh, Palm Springs, the Castro district. No, I was going to say <laughs> what? No, uh, that there was that, um, that serpent symbolism. Oh yeah, all the shamans, all the, the shamans, shamans back then. They used to have like a uh, serpent their hair the and a bun. Oh, so and it had like a little tail on so it. Real quick, my sperm impact theory. Ah uh, yes. So there's the serpent. Theory. There's serpent. There's serpent iconography everywhere, like absolutely everywhere, and a lot of people associate Bunch of with different a comet. Cultures. Uh, associate with a comet. But if you go look, go look at Serpent Mound, if you go look, some of the serpents have really big heads, and uh. I just like it looks like sperm. Like if this is all fertility stuff, and there's like a Carhan Tepe looks like a bunch of boners mm-hmm. that were dug. <laughs> I mean, that's what, that's what it looks like. And there's a other phallus, if you there's, want to be there's phallic stuff everywhere. And you know, in the Bible, it did say post uh, the flood, be fruitful and, and multiply. multiply. That's what I've been doing. Yeah. Breaking and, news, everyone! It turns out human beings they like to get fucked up. And they also really like to fuck. They yeah. really like to fuck. And I mean, we uh, kind of need to if we want to. Yeah, keep, let's keep yeah. stay around. Mm-hmm. These places are kind of a must around fertility because it is saying, so important. But the to our important human race. part is okay. So if it's instead of a serpent, it's sperm. How do they know what it looks like? How did we get like magnifying glasses? How did they know what it looks like? So that's uh, it, sex is good, by the way, Nick S. Uh, nobody's great. against it. Uh, I'm for it, um, but. It, but not I, this weekend. It's just out there. I actually believe it's comets. Uh, I think this, well, a serpent is also something you see a lot sure in that. your DMT trips. Are you okay, extra guy? I'm just you everything know, you guys say. Like, what, <laughs> I'm making a face. To hear your I can't joke. help it. Yeah, really, it I don't care. <laughs> Continue. I'm going to get. Oh, what, what did Crowder have? I'm going to get me? a light. A light? <laughs> I'm going to get a light that I'm going to throw. <laughs> Don't I'm making talk. a point. I'm right going to give you the Dave Landau button. I'm making a <laughs> Damn. point. Damn. I, I would never do that. I, want to install I just, a, I just remove people from my show when, I, when I want to make a point. I apologize for stepping on your joke. Oh, thanks, man. You like I that? apologize. Wow. For... You like that? Love is in That's the air. So That's gay. Right. No, it's bad. It's bad to step on. You know, it's, you, your point can wait. It's bad to step on a joke. That's my shit. Always go. Let the joke go first. Whether it's good or bad. Whether it's good yeah. or bad. No, th- those who try the most fail the most. Yeah. All right. Back to back to sperm. Back. Oh, d- so the sperm impact theory is uh, <laughs> all, all, impact all, theory. all the all the serpent iconography is just sperm. Yeah. It's just sperm and everybody's just fucking. Yeah. No, no. Uh, but uh, I, it, a lot of the stuff does look like sperm. It does. And I'm like, well, th- it would be interesting because mm-hmm. how in the fuck would they know what it looks like? Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's just the thought. but some like some of them they look like like not just like it looks like a snake and snakes kind of look like sperm like if you've seen sperm they have like a head on them and then they have like a little nub and then like the tail. tadpoles yeah like little tadpoles and a lot of these icon iconic I, I can't speak uh they say a snake iconography iconography uh nice. they say snakes they look closer to the little sperm guys so hmm. but how would they see them how would they know without technology. Uh, I used to be able to read and pronounce things before my strokes, Adam. So, uh, and I, I haven't had it. That, yeah, it was impressive. 
Uh, I don't have an excuse. Johnny B. Casual for $20. I couldn't say what movie I'm excited for, but I look forward to every episode of The Real BBC, Nooner, F&T, and Final Frontier, Whoa. Forbidden Frontier. <laughs> oh, no. Wow. <laughs> what, what was that about uh, being able to speak? back? Oh, not anymore. You used to no, be able to write. Not anymore. I fall. qualified it. Yeah, before the fall. <laughs> I know. I just planned yeah. this. <laughs> you go out there and doing all your ayahuasca trip, look right here, kids. Okay. <laughs> I can't even tell you my kid's name right now. Uh, hope you had a great woo-woo convention. We did. I had fun. the best awesome. time. A lot of crystals, a lot of uh, flashy lights to release your chi or your pineal gland juices or something. I don't know. That looks like you were squeezing stress balls. Though. That's what, they did that too. Oh, okay. The acupuncture. Oh. There was a whole acupuncture area. Oh, little like tinctures acupuncture. where they could drop. Oh, there's, there's unknown there's liquids like into your mouth. Morning yoga, at, which I skipped. Tie dye uh, everywhere. Tie dye <laughs> wow. everywhere. Okay. But the place, the actual place, Indian Wells, it's fucking nice. Yeah, it's really man. Cool. It's a really nice place. Palm Springs is pretty chill. They have an amazing yeah. skate park. I don't know if you happen to drive past it, but it's pretty big. I'm not surprised. Like, it, it, this, is, this is a nice town. It's. <laughs> It's run by Republicans. The streets are clean, <laughs> dude. It's yeah. fucking yeah. It's it's nice. clean there. Yeah, it's nice. It's super clean. It's a nice, nice it's, spot. It's got old people and gay people, so it's just clean and uh, old gay people and old also. gay people. Yeah, uh, Tardis. It's a lot of those. Twenty Australian dollars. Uh, says hi, Gary and company. I am. Uh, I am being royalty treated in Ramble on Cafe in Upper Fern Tree Gully, and I am thinking always of you guys. Oh. Uh, best wishes from mother. Oh, Peter Davison. What's up, Peter Davison? And uh, tell mom Thank you. I said hi. Best of health, and we love her. We love mom down in Australia. Uh, Diego Machado for 22. Brazilian. What was that? Brazilian. Ours is Brazilian, isn't it? Oh, Dan Vask, funny money. Okay. okay. Uh, oh, yeah, that. Yeah, Gary, your friends want you to play Gollum. Yeah. Yes. Play. Friends in quotes, by the way. Uh, but have they ever <laughs> they told you, you money. there is a game about alien abductions, Native American spiritual stuff, and our with our bell in it? Pray what? 2006. Our, oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. I forgot. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I knew about this. I've never played the game, but now I'm going you to. You should play. It's a really good cool. game. Cool. Is it on yeah. Steam? Uh, I think so. I'll yeah. You it. Can see a Native okay. American, and he's in a bar. Uh, like, you know, like Native Americans, and then the alien comes, <laughs> and then he drinking the, fire water. <laughs> the the ceiling comes off, and it sucks up your girlfriend, and then it sucks you up, and then you go into the spaceship, and you have to fight to find your girlfriend again. It's really good. What if you didn't like her very much? What if you just well, said I mean, she's Native American? She's what if you go? Hell. Thanks, bro. No. Oh, you're okay. Like, Peace. I'm out. Peace out. Misogyny. Pass that probe over here. Pass it over. Uh, no. I, okay. So I'll that play. That was pretty ball. gay. I'll play Gollum. Hey, that was him. That wasn't me. It was uh, in character. Dude. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. Okay. Or gay. Uh <laughs> the gay character, clearly. I'm gonna clearly. play Gollum, but I'm also uh I'm gonna go out and Don't. get buy a PlayStation 2 and play Return of the King, dude. I i I'm like, I dude, that's I that I, that's what I want to play. I love that. So game. That's what that's what I'm gonna but Gollum, I'll play it. I, I know it sucks, but uh the question is, will I notice? I don't know. I don't know. I think you will. Buford I think you will. Justice for forty nine ninety nine. Buford T Justice. Buford T Justice. I'm a believer in a combination of both ancient civilization theory and ancient alien theory. Mm-hmm. The problem with airbursts, especially in the ancient past, is that they are incredibly difficult to prove. You are correct. Almost, I mean, almost impossible. Uh, even to Guska, there is no physical right. evidence aside from the except for all the trees, flattened trees. Yeah, uh, but like you're talking about like sphere, spherules and stuff like now that there's no no way yeah. because whatever's left of that uh, meteorite or whatever the hell you call it, it blew up. It oh. uh, vaporized. Uh, they did find uh, the oh Adam, what's the name of the Chavlinsky Chablinsky something Russian, the one from 2013, the one that oh. they found uh, that ash cams. Yeah. They oh found, really? Yeah. They 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 got they because it landed in a lake. So uh, hey, they, nice. they, they pulled it up and found it. That's don't cool. know what happened to it. Uh, J. H. Schwalbach. Hello. Forty nine seventy three. Very specific. <laughs> that is the year. Um, 
who becomes self-aware. I can't say AI will be way ahead yeah, of it. Yeah, that'll be. No, we'll just say that's that's when they finally figure out time travel and start going back yeah. to okay, cross-check. That, bring it back to what Garrett that's was saying. The year 4973 will be the 4973. year of time travel. Uh, the only true forbidden frontier is my wife's anus. <laughs> She has made, James Paul, you talk about your wife a lot. <laughs> she, she has made that quite clear. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. All right. Uh, right there with you, James. She has made that quite clear. Everything else should be exposed. Fight on my warriors of truth. Hail. <laughs> did anyone else did anyone else catch the sadness in Garrett's voice there? <laughs> no. Right there with you, bud. <laughs> Just made that very clear. <laughs> oh god. Um, Trucker Rob for $20. Mm. Oh. Hong Kong. Oh, it's a What's up, Trucker Rob? Drive safe. It's the frontier that is forbidden. Good to see Gary and Garrett consummating their love of man buns on this trip. Gary, have you heard of the Oxus civilization? No. We're, uh, very interesting lost Bronze Age Ooh. civilization called the Oxus. No. I'll have to check it out. Cool. There are civilizations like they they know they were there, but they know shit about it, which yeah. is pretty interesting, I think. Uh, especially since archaeology somehow thinks they have it all figured out. Uh, except for all the shit they don't have figured out. The Ark Spartan for 22 Canadian pesos. Sorry for the Canadian pesos. It's all right. It's all good. Sorry you're in Canada. Uh, Gary, uh, are you able to explain better the Battle of Los Angeles, uh, the Second World War? Do you think uh, do you know what happened? Stuff and feds won't say anything about it. Love that story. Well, it's uh, it's funny because Steven Spielberg's 1941 is kind of based on the Battle of Los Angeles, but it, it, they didn't use UFOs. They used uh, uh, the Japanese, and the Japanese were actually out there. It's a super politically incorrect movie. It's um, one of Steven Spielberg's failures, but I fucking love the movie. It's the very first movie. I know. Was it not, was his, it first not his first movie? No, 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 no. Duel was his first movie. Oh, that was the truck movie, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, I like 1941. I own it. Uh, but um, basically, what happened was somebody saw they saw a you, what, an unidentified object in the air. Everybody was on super super high alert. Tensions were very high. There was lookouts everywhere, all over California, because there was very credible reports that Japan was going to attack either Los Angeles or San Diego, mm -hmm. more likely San Diego because of the Navy base. But, um, uh, and it was, uh, yeah, my grandpa was like a lookout back then, but, uh, I digress. Uh, somebody saw something over LA and they just started firing everything at it, everything at it. And there is, uh, a, the cover of the LA times has an image that looks like spotlights on a UFO Wow. And uh, the shrapnel that fell down killed people like it was a, a serious event. Um, the historians put it down to mass hysteria. Uh, others say it's real. It's hard to say. I cool. uh, I mean, I could see either way. I, mean, I, I could see it happening. I could definitely see it happening. Now, the, the Japanese did have uh, they did. They were off the coast. That, that we What know if that. like a scout ship came in to scout L.A. before they were going to attack it? And they saw them just like unleashed. Like, well, I don't know if the Japanese, I mean, had a scout ship, but uh, was it a blimp or something like I, you know, I don't know. Uh, but I know it's one of those classic UFO stories. Yeah, yeah. Art Bell's done entire episodes on it. I'd highly recommend you listen to it. It's it's fascinating that enough people thought they saw something up there. But once you also have to think about it realistically. Okay, maybe one guy thought he saw something, started firing, and everybody just went. Yeah, we're all where all the spotlights went. They just started firing up and not giving a shit about everybody who lived underneath them. Yeah, because um, a lot of those anti-aircraft missiles, they blow up in the air and then shrapnel comes yeah, down. Yeah, that whatnot, stuff so. like it, yeah. it, 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 it hurt a lot of people. Um, 
but uh, Foo Fighters were all over the place too. That's a great point. Yeah, that's a great point. So uh, I'm gonna lean towards it's a possibility. How's that sound? Mm -hmm. Foo Fighters are beyond. I, I I think those were a fact. They were reported. They were they were uh, filmed. They were photographed. Uh, everybody saw them. Every pilot saw them. Uh, enemy pilots saw them. Uh, yeah, th there's yeah. just too many reports to say that that wasn't a thing. What Flack. is that? What, what is a Foo Fighter? Oh, you don't know what a Foo? Well, it's not Dave Grohl. Okay. No, I, no, obviously, yeah. You know, the first album, he he played every instrument, by the way. There was yeah. no real band. He played all the instruments. Mm -hmm. um, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Foo Fighters are little basically UFOs that they saw during World War II, but they were like balls of light that were seen next to uh, all the planes. Wow. Or it was like from the future and they were coming back and just documenting. Yeah, the, uh, the, like, oh, the Foo Fighters this. were like the real deal, I think. There's there's so much the documentation, evidence, uh, witness testimony. It's insane. And it could, it could be us. Like, hey, you want to go visit World War II? Jump in our, you know, like uh, our little ball of light we can send back in time can go to your... Well, it's not going to be a TV. We'll project in your brain a dogfight in World War II. We can do it in real life, you know? Yeah. We'll just go back there. Dude, I'd watch that. And they'll just think it's ball of lights, and they'll call it something like a Foo Fighter or something like that, you know? I, who knows? Who knows? But they We were, know they did because we're in the future. Something was there. Or it's in another dimension, and they're like, we can just, you well, know, op open this window and look there. through it in, in a different dimension, and that's what's going on. Oh, wow, this... The war going on out here. Uh oh, like uh, Dolan and Nick both both said, maybe we're some kind of answer. You know, a, 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 an experiment. We're basically an experiment, and we like you know, an ant farm. We're, we're going to get monitored before we kill each other, and they'll see. And obviously, there's an acceptable amount. There's an acceptable Truman amount Joe. of killing. That's part of the. That's part of the the, the experiment. But if they're going to like go out and nuke each other, we might have to step in at that point or something. And that's why we haven't yet. Yeah, we don't we don't want our aquarium to get blown up or yeah. terrarium, but it's OK. If they kill a, you know, they like, kill each other. Every dude, if a couple time. of your fish kill each other, do you care? I mean, you're like, oh, bummer, but I'll get new fish. I've owned a beta fish before. They freaking screw up every other fish. They're like alphas. They're like the alphas, but they're called yeah, beta. But they're called beta for some reason. Smooth the DJ is getting five neurotic memberships for twenty five dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Smooth the DJ. Uh, oh. oh boy. Are you Emra? Are you Emra? Oyemra? Yes. For twenty dollars says, yo, first time giving you my slave wage. Oh, I don't want you to give you a slave wage. Is it this? Thank you though. Which one is it? No. 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 That one. That pink one. one. I'm on a different soundboard. Sorry. Uh thank you. Uh that was an adventure there. <laughs> Have, it's dude every every day everything i do is an adventure adam especially when um, you're by your side yes uh have you heard of coordinated remote viewing and its connection to extraterrestrial extra dimensional life i have that a guy on the panel uh we had a guy on the panel mm -hmm. garrett's not that much yeah, of a believer believe um i i think remote viewing is a thing i do especially since the government to this day still uses it well, that's what the Foo Fighters were, right? Just remote viewing from a different dimension yeah, or like, the future uh, or the like past. I can, I can sit here and then see. Yeah, Adam's that's bullshit. Room, and then yeah. like I can connect to Adam's room and like tell you, you what he's wearing. Well, that I'm in that out of a cup. Accidental yeah, yeah. Truth that we just watched. Uh, Gary Nolan, who is a professor at Stanford, uh, talked to contactees, and there's a portion of their brain that lights up like a Christmas tree that. Other people's don't. Hmm. It's very hmm. got to see it. Got to see it. Ecthelion the second in two parts for twenty dollars. Hail Forbidden Frontier. I look forward to this stream almost as much as Friday. Oh, cool. Thank you. Uh, not always convinced. Neither are we. Uh, if nothing else entertained, I'll try to keep my comments short so uh, as not to contribute to your strokes. <laughs> Too late. I mean. <laughs> truth uh hail qbg death dealer is the mascot for the third That's corp right. of u.s army army Thank yes uh, they have a life-size statue of it outside fort hood uh fascinatingly there is an article now about how death dealer statue is racist are you serious <laughs> i'm not 
Come on. So technically, on. by association, you're I, racist because you have it on your wall behind you ever. Well, in your office. Well, the military is racist. That's that's so fucked. Everything is racist. Everything's racist. Oh. If they pull it down, I'll go steal it. Uh, Hannah G for twenty dollars. What uh, Adam asked about Israel is the giant meek uh, meekfa for the, oh, the pool. Meekfa is a cleansing pool that everyone had to use before entering the temple. They also uh, found the stone walkways from the pool up to the temple. No oh. way. Well, they're finding all kinds of stuff cool. in Israel, That's including cool. at the near the Wailing Wall at the at Solomon's Temple. I, I don't know if that's what it's actually called, but they found a, a giant megalithic stone. They don't know exactly how big it is, but it's as big as it's close to as big as the, one of the base stones in at Baalbek. It's fucking cool. huge. A lot of Israel is built on top of other other things, stuff. Like yeah. yeah. And yeah, the uh, foundations it, all, all throughout the Mediterranean. Yeah. Think all, about they're all built on stuff that was already there we were talking about countries that are up like afghanistan probably has to have tons of shit absolutely tons of stuff libya. that we will never see libya um has you know uh uh th they have older pictures of it P stuff's probably gone now yeah. but uh the stuff that looks exactly like stonehenge yeah. exactly like it like in libya so there's like countries we can't get into that probably have tons of stuff sad uh, Jared Cruz has gifted 20 neurotic memberships for $100. Thank Holy you. Shit, Dang. That's a freaking Chad. Hundy. 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 Hey. All right, we got to do a few more. Uh, how are we doing on time there? Um, uh, We got 10 minutes. We're good. We're good. We're good. You okay, Adam? You okay? Good, I know it's past your bedtime. Uh, I I'm, I've been yawning so much. I'm sorry if, if it's like, uh, it is kind of late uh, for news. me. Um, it I, is. Don't even know what, I don't even know. Can you go ten anymore. more minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Th was that a yeah? Did he just pass out? No. It's it's three. Yeah, it's past three. Um, oh, okay. Go to bed. I I wouldn't mind. Um, I am kind of tired, but um, we're just listening to soups, so I, I can go a little bit longer. It's fine. Right on. Wow. Thanks, man. Enrico Palazzo for five dollars. I finished unboxing after my move. And realized either X Ray Girl or Quarter Black is missing a disc from In Search of. Who do I need to send to? It looks like Quarter Black. I think we figured yeah, out. Yeah, I checked it. It's Quarter Black. I thought I had all mine. I'll, I'll check. Next week, I'll let you know. Quantum Sledgehammer for 1059. A question for the group. If NASA, ESA at all, currently has proof or eventually finds the proof of intelligent alien life, should they tell the public or is it best to keep it secret? What do you think? Tell the people. Tell the people. Honesty. Always. Yeah. Uh, will the people believe it from NASA? No. Not all of them. No. No. It's not up to them to decide. No, I, I forgot what the girl's right. name is. Exactly. Are. It's not up to them to decide there was a something girl, like that. The, the one girl on the on the UFO Everyone panel deserves. kept saying that. She's like, we don't need the fucking government you to tell us they're disclosure. true. You find it on your own. And I'm like, I'm kind of with that mm. because, uh, you know, yeah, like, if NASA comes out with it, there's going to be a bunch of people who don't believe it. I'm, I might be one of them, you know. Um, I, I might believe it. the Tic Tac is definitely something really fucking weird Maybe. that I believe is not us now. I'll just say that it's not us now, uh, and that's mostly based on the pilot's testimony, Fravor. I think that guy's legit, but um, uh, all the other stuff, I uh, they they really made a very good case how this could be like a backdoor way to 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 psyop us. In well, it? they are. I mean, Richard Dolan just did a, a live stream on this. Like ever since the Tic Tac thing, it's uh, the government either whatever. Fa I don't know if there's a faction inside that went too far, but now they're put. Well, now that there's a different guy in office, they're putting a lid on it. They're putting a lid on it, and they're becoming the national security state that we all know and love. So uh, this might be a backdoor way of doing that. Discredit people, put some videos out. Like that's when Nick Pope said, "Don't put all your eggs in one yeah. basket." You know, we, we don't know. We we so don't. what if it's a setup? What if they're releasing these things that look really credible, and a bunch of people go out there and say, "This is definitely aliens," and then they go, "Well, here's some proof that it's not," and it makes them all look. It's like going to take so. one of you guys out there to have a camera in the right place at the right time and then putting it up there and then living through all the scrutiny of you faked it, but like, you'll know if you did or didn't. 
and that that's you know how we get past that i don't know i don't know um we need another mass sighting we need another phoenix lights type of sighting i think uh and it might happen those happen like once every 20 30 years phoenix light was a if the phoenix lights happen now holy shit there would be some great footage because everybody has a fucking camera yeah everybody and there's a lot of footage of that and there was there, there's tons of like that's one of the compelling ones that, like, the what? phoenix lights is is a trip so either we have this giant uh quarter mile long yeah a boomerang type of craft that can just fly and maybe it's a dirigible maybe it's a fucking b- a balloon uh you know maybe maybe it's like a stealth balloon uh could be quarter mile long yeah flies silently uh uh, it's hard to believe, but sure. Mm-hmm. And then Stephenville, Stephenville, uh, Texas. That that was a pretty uh, lots of documentation on that one. Um, yeah, we need something like that to happen. We need a, a crazy UFO to fly over a big fucking city. Yeah. <laughs> we do. I mean, that's it. Uh, I have a yeah. buddy who lives in New York who he sends me videos and has sent me videos for years because he was uh, he was always he was like a Magic Gathering buddy. We'd have Magic Night, and he'd come over and be like, "Dude, I." freaking saw another one and then like he'd show the video and i'm like yeah i don't i don't see it but some of the things like i can't really explain what it was it's not like it was a bird and it wasn't a plane yeah i it, don't know what it was it needs it was to weird. happen to the right city look. too it needs to be in like big sky country like phoenix again or scottsdale or san antonio someplace where it's flat and you can mm-hmm. see the sky and you can see perspective. I mean, it would have to like, that's why it's like, for one, I, I think a lot of these, if they're here, which I think they are, they've got stealth. They can just turn invisible. Like we, you know, yeah, I, why I, would I th- they be caught? I think it's always a mistake when we see it. It's a mistake. They make mistakes. And, and um, I think the Roswell crash was just a mistake. It's just an accident. Um and uh you know that's how we found out and and maybe they were new maybe these were like the new aliens to the like maybe they just like oh shit our sticker says well no like student their their little their little device like oh uh our experiment just exploded its first nuclear bomb all right we're gonna send the new guys over there who haven't been there (laughs) and go check it out and somebody forgot to tell them about this thing called lightning and uh yeah you know uh, who knows i bet they're just just as bad at driving as, as humans. Are. Or maybe they're interdimensional. Maybe that's like kind of dangerous, even for a super advanced civilization. I could see that happening too. Uh, Dav- like theoretically, we know there's multiple dimensions. Theoretically, we know there's other planets that are like ours that are there's other yeah. civilizations theoretically. So theoretically, why in the fuck wouldn't they have like happen? Theoretically come over. Some mothership threw out a bunch of probes. Probe finds us. Sends a signal back. That signal gets interrupted by the competing civilization. It's like, yeah. I mean, you know, Christopher Columbus, the dumb shit, stumbled across America. So, like, uh, you know, it, it's it's it, it could it could happen. I don't know if he was a total dumb shit, but uh, no, he was pretty dumb. If you read the stories about how he how he got here. He's a moron. He's yeah. an idiot. Uh, Davish for four ninety nine. Hey Gary, I know you're real busy, but I sent you something you're gonna really love into your Twitter DMs as a fellow Tolkien nerd. Have a great show. Thank you. I will check it out, mm. Davish. Thanks. Or here, Nick S for four ninety nine. I'm so proud of you both, Gary and QBG. You'll all be so much happier now that you're out. <laughs> yes, <laughs> out in Palm. You Street. guys are positively glowing. Uh, yeah. Not pregnant. We got fucking sun. Okay, like we actually stepped out of our studios and experienced the fiery day ball in the sky. Yeah. Okay. Uh, The god that is muffler tape uh, for ten dollars says Gary. Not to derail too much, but maybe try reading the manga. Dan, what is? How do I say this? Dan. 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 Sometimes I can't even read the fucking title. How am I supposed to read the manga? <laughs> Since it is basically all topics covered in the show from alien spirits, ancient civilizations, etc. Really awesome. All right, I'll check it out. But I like the non-fiction, well, non-fiction stuff from that. I bought two books. I bought oh, oh man, yeah. I am ready to dive in. Bringing. Aurora Uplinks for two dollars says mash and clone wars crossover about docs 
and clones. Doctors and clones. Okay. Don't give, don't give Disney any okay. ideas. It'll be an all female cast. Yes, it will. God. It'll all be gay. Don't do it. Uh, Sean asked for $100. Woo! Uh, Sean S has paid me to to roast me for me <laughs> like missing one thing on Star Trek. That's why I love nerds. Picard season three sucked. Noob, who was Admiral Sher- Shelby Durr. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, I I hadn't watched Next Generation for like a decade. <laughs> so yeah, you, like, being fake nerd, fake nerd, totally fake nerd. You're right, but Sean, love you. Thank you for the hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Garrett Cruz. I mean, like, you couldn't have done that was like a month ago. <laughs> that was more than a month ago. <laughs> uh, gifted five neurotic live memberships for 25. And I did not recognize that was the same actress at all. Cause she because it's been 30 fucking years. Um, Jared Cruz has gifted five neurotic live memberships for $25. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you. Eric K for two dollars. Garrett, what? Gary, please, three aliens in your body. Well, they I don't know if they're all aliens. Okay. One of them might be a techno alien. One yeah, might be a some cybernetic. On. A sh- machine. I think they were just all tumors. Let's be real. Dude it has was, tumor in his brain. Dude, dude had tumors. Uh Matthew Hammond for 499. Perfect timing. I just got out of seeing a theater showing of Raiders oh. of the Lost Ark. Nice. Hell yeah. Mm. Also, X-ray girl. Will you get something? Uh, you'll get something Tuesday. Oh, I'll pants. check it out. In your PO, is that what they're calling it now these days? In my PO box. Yeah. I'd worry if he just said box, but I'm glad he put PO in front of it. Uh, yeah, Fluffy Boy too. 2004 says, "What the fuck is up, Denny's?" <laughs> what the fuck is up, Denny's? <laughs> All right. I, on that note, Fluffer Boy, you're the best. Um, I'm I'm gonna go. I I'm you had to pass out. Fall, I'm falling asleep, guys. Uh, it's it's way past my bedtime. So. All right, brother. And I was gardening all day too, so it was kind of yeah. like a playing. Fall, long day in the sun it was great though but uh it was cool to hear from uh, hear about this stuff uh, i don't know what we're going to talk about next week but i'm excited about it because we'll probably go in fun. like once i watch a lot of this stuff we'll probably go into i'll i'll let in I'll details let you know. i'll give yeah, you the well, details send, yeah them. send me send me them i'll send you, you details in the as soon as you can. section we'll let you know what your homework is going to be I, I love yeah. i love it it's the, it's the first time in my life i actually enjoy my homework so <laughs> chat you guys are the best i'm out of here i'll see you Bye, tomorrow garrett uh, are you gonna be back tomorrow or actually I'm f- what i think i'm flying i'm in the plane uh during bay staff so you're gonna go to the bathroom and then get wi-fi and join yeah. you know call in right like turn your phones off and be like bay staff bay staff bitches All yeah right. this airline wi-fi is so good <clears throat> i actually i have never used it is it uh, is it bad? It's so, I, so bad. Yeah, it's on bad. the airline, but yeah, it's not it's really surprising. It's like Actually. a waste. All right, peace out, chat guys. I'll see you next Bye. week. Later, brother. Later. Hey, see you, Adam Krigler. Adam Krigler, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Hayden, seventy-five for ten dollars says, "Hey." It makes you wonder when they stop doing actual science, the narrative has become most important. It would seem like they could get more grant money with a new discovery. It's always about control. You are. Spot on, brother. Bang on. If science, mm-hmm. quite frankly, Graham and this crowd at Contact is way more fun than a bunch of quackademics regurgitating stuff. Yeah. And some are great. Some are actually moving the needle. We need more of them. And what they need to do is just kind of let go of this, you know, Clovis first here in America and uh, start pushing civilization back because to think that hunter gatherers just woke up one morning and said, let's build Gobekli Tepe. It's ridiculous. We need and to no we way. realize that we may not know it, but we definitely do not know, but they need to just relax and be like, when we have new information come in, the, apo- the hypothesis changes. That's just, there's nothing set in stone. They need to learn that. Uh, Charles Morris for five dollars says, I have the Hobbit for sale. I sent you an email. What, which one? The Hobbit. Do you have like a first print of the book? I think Gary might have the book already. I have the book already, but if you're talking first print, Charles, email me. Oh, you did email me. <laughs> okay. I mean, <laughs> a first print of the Hobbit, I'd probably That'd have be amazing. Yeah. Well, I can't think about that. I it would be a first on my home because I I don't so I don't have to take a second. I'd have to take a first on my home. But um 
I'll, I'll, I'll check it out for sure. I'd love a first print of that. Oh my God. I'd love a first print of that. Uh, okay. We'll get the rest in a square up. I owe you guys a square up and I'll do it when I get back. <laughs> oh, I will do it before Dallas, before I leave for Dallas. I have to record two videos, dude. And we have a video coming out on Monday. Monday, a Perry Chan joint. He's been yeah. working on this thing for two weeks. Fingers to the bone. Fingers to the bone. I worked him like an Asian guy. Okay. <laughs> Like those kids in the Nike factory. Those kids in the Nike factory. Just like those kids, they he built the best video possible. The best video, detailed and beautiful for four cents a day. That Asian. Uh, I let him eat. Attention to detail. I let him eat a bowl of rice when he was done. Just a little rice, yeah. Just a little bit. No soy sauce. Didn't even make it taste good. Just rice. (laughs) Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, that he only gets that if you know after the video comes. If the views are up, you know. Yeah. Only if it does well. (laughs) Um, but uh, we will be back. I've, we've got a lot of stuff to go over. We're going to get all this to, to Adam. And um, I had a great time. Did you have a great time? I did. It was I fun. It was time. a lot of fun. Lots of fun. So I'm, I'm going to go out to dinner. Uh, so what do you got coming up, Garrett? I have uh, not much on my channel because I've been kind of busy. Uh, I've got a, a new show coming out. Yeah, it's something little. It's called uh, Normal World. It's a three-day-a-week show. We're gonna have a, it's going to be like a talk show. Yeah. I have stories and sketches and guests and musical guests and comedians. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's starting on June 20th. So go subscribe to that on YouTube right now. We're, we're putting yeah. up sketches. So there's like four sketches up right now. You can go watch. Links in the description. Nice. Uh, what do you got coming up? Exodus Agu. Ooh, um, subscribe to the channel. I might go live just randomly in Dallas. Um, I'll probably play a game tomorrow in the next couple days before we leave. Um, I just wanted to highlight uh, Cosmic Summit. You heard how exciting it was to go through all these panels with the panel here. Um, so if you want to kind of experience and are not able to go to Cosmic Summit, there is a link below where you can get tickets to go like online and watch the panels as well. And I think you get to keep the VODs too. So that uh, could be pretty exciting so yeah get tickets if you want because i want to i'm not able to go but yeah thanks gary thank you excellent goo uh like i said i got a video coming out monday i'll be home monday I'll be recording two videos monday uh and then we got dallas so i'm gonna be home for two days and hopefully my plane. Yeah, I'm flying Spirit Airlines too. Yeah, me too. Shit. Yeah, we're going fly to, with Spirit Airlines. We're going back to L.A. Where life is a nightmare. Yeah, well, L.A. is a nightmare. Mm-hmm. I'll be happy to get on the Spirit Airline to get the hell out of there. Uh, when's the gaming stream? Soon, soon. But uh, like a lot of news piled up while I was out here having a good time. My UFO convention. So we got you know back to the pop culture war, and uh, yeah, but uh, lots of fun. We'll be back with. Uh, um, probably do a nooner on wednesday i'll be on the real bbc on tuesday i will be on the real bbc on tuesday so uh and who's our guest next week on friday night tides for dallas Is Com- it Eric? eric's right Is eric and eric? i guess chris if he's gonna chris, be there chris, as well. yeah, yeah 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 so they'll and be joining be in us in person that'll be in yeah. person yeah i mean obviously online with, online with, and in person like, we are going to be in person yeah we'll be yeah. in person <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah and then i'll make chris gore and eric july do like a, a race or something in the street we'll see you when <laughs> um, i have one guess be athletic uh, yeah uh hail eric july by the way i some two's coming Dude, out yeah, he's kicking ass uh he's doing a great job over there at the ripperverse and uh we love him and frank yeah. gore well i don't know frank gore runs a pretty fast 40 so i don't know. He might I, be able I to take eric july throw a kick once <laughs> oh didn't turn oh, no. out. Uh, uh, He's got long legs, though, Frank yeah. Gore. I love Picard season three. I freaking love it. Unabashedly love it. It's not perfect, but uh, it is by far the best Star Trek we're ever gonna. It's the best Star Trek we're ever gonna get till the end mm-hmm. of time. Now, mm-hmm. and it was an anomaly was, yeah. that uh, that I didn't expect, and it will not happen again. It will not happen again. Strange New Worlds fucking sucks balls. And uh, some lower deck shit. I don't even care. Cartoons? Oh, yeah. 
what is that the the 3d animated one with the weird aliens that don't even look like star trek aliens that's prodigy that's that stupid garbage too. looks like it's all garbage crap uh that, i mean i know all the reasons why star trek card was good and hopefully someday very soon i'll give you all of the reasons but uh, one we can talk about openly is kurtzman had nothing to do with it he fucked off and did something else and didn't care so somebody came in sure who, back in who had worked on star trek before uh back on real star trek back uh prior to 2005 and uh made like did the best he could uh with a uh, pretty terrible framework and was able uh managed to make something not only watchable entertaining and gave the next generation crew the send off i never thought they'd get so loved it no regrets all right uh we will see you next sunday on forbidden frontier ciao Bye, ciao everyone yeah uh... Gary, some serious gourmet shit. What flavor is this? That's right, it's the all hell medium roast private blend. Check out the Geek Grind Coffee Nerdrotic page for our other options like the decadent Feathers of Liberty vanilla infused flavored coffee. Or if you're looking for something darker, try the dark roast FNT blend of the fellowship. You know what? Just buy all three. Geekgrindcoffee.com. Use discount code Nerdrotic. Welcome, travelers, to the fringes of reality, where the strange and mysterious meet, and the thin veil between fact and fiction is torn. Welcome to the Forbidden Frontier.